Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I am here with Blitz Dota. So good to have you again. Another tournament, another year, another Liquid versus OG. You faced these guys so many times before. Do you feel like you kind of know what they're going to bring out, or are they surprising you, especially at this tournament? Uh, I mean, this is their first Leshrac pick, I think, in the entire tournament. So that was a little bit surprising, but not wholly unexpected. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we have a lot of familiarity with them. Obviously, Tommy was on our team, so... Now, I know that your heart must be racing seeing that Centaur pick. The cart is extremely powerful. It is extremely viable. Will this be the first time that we see the Centaur cart? Are you ready for it? Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, super sick, especially since you suggested it. So I hope they just straight up rush it. No other items. Yep, me too. All right, fantastic. Will we see the first card? Will we see Liquid coming out ahead? I hope so. Thank you so much, Blitz Dota. And we will run right into this game, game number one. Well, thank you so much, Slex. We do get into it. Game number one between OG and Liquid, these fan favorite teams. One of them has to go home today. Boys, it's an absolute pleasure casting with you both here at TI11. I can't wait to get this one started. Talk to me. I mean, we've already discussed the drafts. We've got a straight up pause. This is a classic SEA pause, by the way. Celery, this is how you cast SEA Dota. Uh, but what are you thinking? Like going into this laning stage, is there anything in particular we have to worry about? I think the Slark lane will be very interesting. For that reason, I would have liked the Lina to be POS 4. I think that would have been a lot better against Slark in lane. But we'll have to see. <laughs> Boxy, please. <laughs> I mean, they've got the right guys for it at the very least. We're used to it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, maybe a 2 r pass, maybe 3 or hopefully not. But, you know, you could be ready for one. Could be the longest series just by virtue of a oh, pause like that, but yeah. uh, you know, this can be a bit dicey. I don't know why everyone's clapping, John. I don't know why they're clapping. Uh, does everyone really want to sit here for two hours looking yeah. at a blank screen? You know, maximize that ticket, get more games out, <laughs> more Dota <laughs> out for our, yeah. Hopefully no one abandons us. That would be nice. Hopefully not. It looks like we are ready. The, the capital was there as well. Just, we're ready to go very, very soon. So game one, you, you talked about the slot lane, I believe. You wanted to see a pause for Lina. It doesn't seem like that's going to be quite the case. Uh, Mikkei has taken the uh, the mid lane there once again. Yesterday we did see, and Gunnar was talking about this quite a lot. He wanted to see the right click Lina yesterday, and it actually was a magic build. What's your prediction this time? Does Mikkei go the magic style of Lina, or do you, would you prefer to see a right click build this time around? Uh... Personally, I'm more a fan of the right-click build. I think it scales a bit quicker, and it should it should be very good in this game. Due to OG not having the most jump for the back line. I think if he has magic, he might also have a hard time against SD ult, which will purge. He cannot sell heals. He's gonna be very slow. I think a BKB should be one of his first items. Yeah, I think it also just ties in with when you have the draw, when you have the Marcy, you can just do a lot of damage just with the buffs around you, and you can just absolutely melt these heroes. So. We'll see if that's what Miki opts for. Uh, it should be really nice. I love your point there, though. Like, the lane for Yuragi. Uh, do you feel like that's something Liquid might just have to struggle with here with the offlane Pango for Zai? Like, we've seen Zai multiple times before. He loves all his utility. He loves setting up for his team. Is he going to be able to find those timings here? So we talked a bit earlier about lane pulls. I think if Liquid can get some good pulls off, it might be a bit hard for the Lich to connect the waves, and that might give them a good lane. Their goal should be to probably go 50-50 in this lane. I think the Lich Lark should have the upper hand there. We are going to see both teams hanging around that mid lane as per usual. Flags being placed by OG around the banner rune spots. No fights to break out, it seems. Though bottom side, maybe we do the see something begins. to break out. Not quite. In fact, they are trying a little bit. The K's around top side. Tiger, he could be in a bit of danger, but the slows aren't going to be too much at level 1. The Tumba, he does have the Frost Arrows, but... Well, maybe it will be. They land another. Tiger, still running. Looks like he's going to be just fine, but quite a bit of harassment being dealt already. Yeah, just shoves him away. They're kind of ready for that lane. You can see Insania again. Six Mango is ready, blocks the large camp here up top. So he's going to be able to set up, uh, kind of enable that lane, stop them from trying to equalize here on OG's end at least. Pretty nice start for OG. Free bounty runs. It actually helps a lot with these lanes. Having a little bit extra gold, a little bit more regen. You can snowball quite a bit. Let's talk about the mid lane to get started. I mean, you've got Mikke. He's going to be against BZM on the Lesh right now. I think you mentioned in the draft, Mikke should have somewhat of an advantage against the Lesh just based on how much range you have to harass away from. Is there a way BZM can kind of even out or, or win this lane against Mikke? Winning it is going to be very hard, but I think it's a very high skill matchup where if the Lesh does a really good job, he will go close to even. 
Overall, though, Nick is an expert on Lena, so he's probably gonna take advantage of this lane. Uh, Tiger? What is Ooh. Tiger doing right now? He's pulling the creep wave. Insane is pulling it too into the mid lane. <laughs> All right, Celery, go on, analyze this. What's what's going on? Yeah, this is a classic. It's, uh... <laughs> what? What is happening? Double wave yeah. mid. The, the SD really doesn't want to fight this undying. So he's going for these wave pulls, and now, uh, yeah. Here we go. I mean, I've seen musical lanes before. This is uh, a little bit different. A few more plays than I'm used to seeing rotating between these lanes, and yeah, all about the mid matchups of both mid laners. Uh, they get two creep waves instead of one, and this is literally the the mid player dream right here. Just the supports dragging more creeps over. Don't don't ever seen this. Don't get any ideas, by the way, for your pub. This is not what you should be doing. Ty, trying to run, Misha. Gonna be there, Boxy, trying to get aggressive, but the Frostbar's gonna force him away. I think the one thing with that movement from mid, right? You leave that solo lane for the Drow, so you end up having a pretty good time for Matu. He's not gonna be harassed out by the CK solo. Maybe you get less creeps with a creep wave completely gone, but you've got a little bit more breathing room. You don't have to worry about the disruption set up into stun if they do want to run forward. I think overall, OG is very happy with what happened with these wave pulls. And dying is one of the best laners against strength hurls. He will take the damage from the core. He will deny every creep. And when Undying is running away, this is a win for SD. SD is not a lane dominator. He will skill way better. Bottom. That's a lot of damage being dealt, Zai. You get the swashbuckle away and actually finds first blood. Misha, the one to drop. Thought Zai was almost guaranteed bed dead, but Zai able to turn around and at least secure first blood for himself. Matumba, bit of a chase up top. It's going to be just fine, though. Omar unable to connect. Again, you're, you're seeing what Celery said, right? Insane is always dragged away. He's barely spent any time up top. So even though you're leaving that free lane for the Drow, the CK is also feeling pretty all right. He's not being harassed out. He's not losing strength. And he is getting leveled. Tamar's so just able to kind of soak away. He's not finding as much CS, but he's kind of keeping up with the Drow. So they're just trading evenly in farm. And solo e EXP for the Centaur, it just feels a lot better. Yeah. Oh, oh you should be very happy with that. What happened on bot is very nice for Liquid. Getting a kill, getting a first bot for them. In a lane that should be quite rough. And we can see the Lena is having a really, really good time on mid this game. It's taking full advantage of all the extra creeps they got on mid as well. Top lane, ATF, gonna make a jump in. Hood Stomp is there with disruption set up. Matumba, he'll go for the cast, but Tiger, he's got so many stacks over, he will be able to pick up the Drow. They are really abusing the combination as bottom lane, Boxy. He's gonna be just fine to walk his way out. Liquid's still doing just fine down at this bottom lane, but top lane seems to be a bit of a struggle now. Yeah, it's when they can commit, right? It's that classic Centaur Shadow Demon combo. Disruption into stun. The Undying at level 2 doesn't really have much to save you. you level 1 Solar Rip can be nice depending on how the Creep Wave stands, but you can't threaten them away. Another kill for the Fango. Bottom. They are going once again. Zai in danger. He's going to be able to walk away. They did pick up Misha down at that bot lane. It's Yuragi now. The one to be on the run, though Zai moving back in with the toss back out from Boxy. Yuragi, he's the one in danger. Zai still going. They missed the rebound. Yuragi is trying to fight back, but is not going to be able to get it done. At least Zai does die for mid lane. This is a much bigger target. Mikke, top of the CS board right now. Top of the net worth, trying to fight back, but he might be the one to drop and does. Tiger with a fantastic rotation on the Shadow Demon. Yeah, they're, they're all over the map. That's such a big kill for OG. You were almost twice as much on Mika in terms of CS over BZM. So they needed to equalize there to get the rotation out. It does come at the cost maybe of just throwing bot a little bit, but you do want that Lesh to go off to a great start. You mentioned it last time you were watching the last game there, Celery. If, if a Lesh doesn't go off to a good start, it does feel like it gets thrown off. You do need some farm. Yeah, that, that was super nice for the Lesh. He's he's back now on net worth. It's very close. And this this bot lane has been very interesting. I thought this would be a very, very hard lane for them. But due to what happened in the lane at the start, now now it's, it's just an even lane. And that's going to be great for them. It's it's quite detrimental. Yeah, the, the big thing in this game, I feel, is uh, what happened with these wave pulls early. If you look at Undying's net worth, he tanked a lot. This hero spends all his gold on, on net worth for the lane or all's net worth on the lane to win it. But when these waves got pulled and he, he also tried to run mid, I think that was that was a big mistake because now he's very far behind the net worth. The lane was not one, the draw was below the center. 
and it, he needs he needs to try to find some impact real soon to catch back up this hero does not really farm that much yeah that's that's the concern like you mentioned that lane domination that insanius hasn't really had a lane to hold on to Still trying to trade with Taiga up top, and we're seeing a little bit of a back and forth movement here with Misha and with Boxy kind of checking in on mid. But it, it, it's a very even game start so far, despite the back and forth, despite the lane shenanigans. You know, 3 to 3, 1k lead coming out here. The, you do have Mickey on top of everyone else by a huge margin. Like, is that Lena timing? Is this lead by Mika despite the death? Is that what they have to build around here for OG as, uh, for Liquid as they go on? It's gonna be interesting to see what moves they'll make around it. Uh, with not playing. Insania. He was disrupted up. Looks like Tiger just wants to try and retreat, but Insania still chasing it now. Foxy with the rotation. Tiger, well, he's still alive. Very far out. Trying to make it towards Roshan, but Foxy does secure. Now they're going for more. BZM gonna try and trade, but unable to lock him down. It's Insania for a run as well a bit slower we'll drop the tombstone on the high ground just to make sure they can't keep the chase going but they have fed quite a bit of gold back the way of og they still gaze up insania but they will not land the splitter he's gonna be just fine yeah, that, that gives info on that mob so instant d word coming out here from boxy and that should help them maintain some control in that top jungle a lot of back and forth nice. movement with early rotation out and they tried to go for bait play but bzm doesn't quite find anything. At least he can just go back in the jungle farm and he is given room to do so. Yeah, the, the main playmaker Liquid has is going to be this Pango. I think the Lina will need some more time. Yes, he's, he's going to have his Falcon Blade complete, but you don't want to look to make some big moves with this hero. Potentially what Liquid can do is collapse with a lot of heroes on the mid lane and utilize their Lina and that's a win. Bottom lane. Zai still having a very good time against Yuragi. Again, this is the thing we weren't really expecting here against the Slark, but look at Zai! He's completely destroying this bottom lane, and you just, you just almost can't believe it against the Slark, but Zai's making it look easy right now. Yeah, they've, they've just made so many moves across the map for that. They've had to leave Yuragi alone. They, they need to drag Misha around. He's trying to armor up mid to slow down the shove from Mika, and it is slowing down that right click, but it comes at a pretty big cost. Mid lane now, they even find the Lich. It's not the biggest kill in the world, but they want something as Misha is going to get Lacoon. And a very nice pickup from Mika, and it allows them to keep going for that mid T1 tower, as Mika would love to keep harassing. In fact, they want the fight. Tiger forced to run. The Stampede will allow it, but in comes Zai from the side. He still wants Tiger, and he He's gonna find him. Down bot. Down bot as well. But Samba Man has rotated Yuragi, just getting swarmed right now by the side of Liquid, completely drowning his Yuragi as he does go down at the bot lane. Meanwhile, mid, they're still going. They found the left track. BZM gonna try to run, but it's not enough. Liquid, they're flooding the side of OG. It, it, they're all over the map, and Matu, he heads bot. The Stampede was up. Yuragi feels like he can go for that kill. Two split up fights, Liquid found it all. Yeah, that, that was an incredible sequence. They collapsed the mid super well. The Drow realized top was not that safe anymore. Here comes Bot. They even get the bonus kill on the Slark. This was, this was a super good for Liquid. They're, the Drow is not putting himself at risk. He's playing at a safe spot. Center has a good time, but they utilized the timing they had really well. What do you do now? Like OG, 3 to 9, very slight net worth lead the way of Liquid. Do you, do you feel like they're still okay in this game? Do they need to slow the pace down a little bit? Uh, state of the game is, is looking pretty good for Liquid, I think. The Slark and the Draw will both need to catch up. Uh, just keep farming for now. But their Lina is, is very high on top. Their Pengo is having a really, really good game. And this Pengo is going for what looks like a Vlad, potentially a Wraith back. They'll have a really big timing once he gets this. I don't think they're on a rush to take this mid tower. They can move, make a move with Pengo ult at some point. But for now, they should be happy slowing the game down a bit. Bot lane, Gaze is out, but rebound is there, Foxy, he's got the unleash now, onto the Lich, they'll find Misha straight away as Yuragi, he just can't catch a break, they'll toss him back with the dispos, Yuragi, he's gonna keep trying to run, but Zai is right behind him, still landing the swashbuckle with the multi-shot, it won't connect, oh. it just may not matter, Foxy, right on target with a double kill here for Liquid, 
OG losing more bodies as time just goes on. Yeah, that was OG clumping up first. They're the, they were the ones looking for that opportunity with three heroes lined up, two supports backing Yuragi this time around, and they still get punished. Liquid, they just respond so quick. They hit these timings. They have these leveled spikes that just feel massive. And they have so much AoE that even with a Shadow Dance, you're not really safe here for your Yeah, that was, that was a brilliant fight by Liquid. For, for OG, they should probably look to try to involve their Centaur in the game. He's, he's their most farmed hero. This is what can feel a little bit awkward about this hero at times. Is right now, he is super strong. Like, Liquid don't want to fight him. But they're not. They're just fighting on the other side. And for Centaur, it's a bit harder to connect. This Pango TP is in. He has very easy spells to connect with in the fight. And they're abusing that fully right now. Yeah, at what, what point do you feel like Amar is going to take that initiative to join in? He's saving up for the blink. He's only about 700 gold away. Is that the call? Just wait for that initiation and start going? Yeah, yeah I, th I think he's doing the right thing. He just needs this blink before that. You don't really want to join. If possible, OG should be a bit careful on the other side of the map until he has this blink. And they can just fight with him once he's ready. Matumba just having such a good time on this round now, able to just really escalate in terms of net worth. Very far ahead of Yuragi, considering 700 gold right now on the Drow. The Drow, one of the slower farmers in the game, you'd have to argue, but see if that level 6 market does escalate quite a bit, and that's uh, been a very, very good time so far for Matumba as he just continues hanging around that, that jungle. No real risk of dying here for the Drow as Box. He's always around to tank any kind of gank coming, allow him to get out, and speaking of that gank, it may just be coming. Misha is going to be there with BZM. They'll smoke up as two, head down towards the bottom side of the map, see if they can find the side of Liquid, but they've read the movement very well. They are going to back their way up, back into the triangle here, Liquid. It seems like unless you're willing to try and make your way through to that area, OG are going to find nothing with this smoke, and quite frankly, I wouldn't quite recommend going to the triangle of a die right now. Yeah. I, I think OG needs to wait a second. Center has a blink coming now. They can look to make... To make a move with this. Their Slark is queuing up the Midas, which I think is good. This hero, we talked you talked about Drowla being the quickest farmer. Like Slark needs to catch up for sure. He needs to let his team play as four while he just catches up with this Midas. Yeah, does it does it feel like it gets a bit greedy though? I mean you talk about Lushrak also needing items, so you're waiting for this uh, full bloodstone to be up. Uh, at least the blink will allow Amar to play, but you've got two farming cores there trying to get that build up while for Liquid it just feels like they don't need as much to kind of get some impact here. Yeah, L Liquid is gonna hit a really, really big timing soon. This Pengo has his Vlad's complete. Lina almost has the BKB. So if they can collapse with, th with these timings, take over the map, take the Roche, they, that might, should be really good for them. Big smoke up, OG. Four man smoke through that die triangle, trying to find a big target, but they won't find one quite yet. In fact, Insania, very good positioning. Ready to break the smoke, but won't find anyone quite yet. Oh, they found Matumba on the drow. That's the target they wanted. Insania just a second too early, and Matumba's gonna drop. OG, able to immediately punish off the blink of ATF, and do you call that unfortunate? Just barely missing out on the Undying. You can call it unfortunate. It was also a brilliant move by OG. They chilled, they saw the, the Undying, they just darts them and got the perfect jump. That was really well done by them. They can great use of their blink. Yeah, and that gives them space as well to just shove in mid. Mid tier one not standing so healthy here for Liquid. I'm not going to fully commit from the side of OG, but you can always threaten with that Lesh Rack now. BZM's got enough levels in the Edict that melting through the early objectives is going to be a lot quicker. And for Liquid, they didn't have a massive lead network-wise, so that does even out the game a little bit more. They are going for their smoke play here, though. Yeah, down towards the bottom side. Who can they find there, though? Might rotate towards the left, but no, they are going all the way down Yuragi. bottom. Who are they going to run into? Oh, it's Yuragi. That's the exact target you want. Laguna immediately out. Yuragi going to try to run, but Sai! On target once again, able to secure the kill on Yuragi. He has no breathing room. I think every single kill of Zai has been Yuragi. Zero five, Zai has five kills. Like, What's the worst that All of it's it. just been on that Slark, and they've done a fantastic job of su just suppressing. I mean, the Midas is still gonna have to come out. You're gonna need to eat a lot of space. He does have Midas, but the investment takes time to really pay off. And again, it's just back to kind of waiting for that Slark. So does OG have enough here to kind of buy that space for V5? You mentioned they'd have to play that way. Bloodstone's almost done as well for BZM, so the tools are coming there. Is it enough against that BKB on Lina? Uh, the X Factor they do have is this SD, who is really, really far. Taiga's having a really good game. He's trying to take Radiant over his Slark. Uh, 
he might do so. Did Midas being ready while he's dead? Doesn't get a lot worse as a carry when you see this. Oh. <laughs> the massive Pyrus, it's a classic. What can you do? It happens. Mid lane, Liquid, they're going to start moving in, trying to apply a bit of pressure onto that tier 2 tower. It seems like they're aware that OG just aren't ready to force the fight, though I say that. They do TP in, they do prepare with ATF, they've even got the Bloodstone now up on BZM. Maybe this is the spike they've been looking for to try and force another team fight against Liquid. The question is, can they actually find them? It's a bit rough vision-wise. They don't have that much reach on the, onto the other side of the river here. Lots of sentries out from Liquid just to ensure that they're secure while farming up. So it's going to be a little bit of a dark smoke out. They will go for the play. They saw a little bit of movement up top from Zai clearing up creep waves. Might find something juicy if they stick around to farm here on Liquid's end. Towards the north they go, OG. The massive team fight. Wards are down. They've got the vision. They're going to see Boxy. They'll make the jump in onto the Marcy. Boxy, he's still actually a little bit of a tankier target. They'll purge him up, gaze him, and stun him up here with BZM. It's going to be a nice position for pickoff for the side of OG. Can they find more? No, I, don't, I don't think Liquid minds it too much. OG doesn't have any threat on the Roche right now. Liquid still has a nice Radiant's ward on them, so they can just wait a second. They didn't lose any of their core heroes. So it shouldn't be too bad. Nope. I mean, they could have easily found Mika if he just hanged around in that area near five, but they pull back in the right time. Still. Here we go. ATF flick in. That's a two man stun out from ATF into the Stampede. This could be a great team fight for OG. They've already got Zai down. Insania dropping, but the Chain Frost not quite bouncing his way, but it won't matter. They'll find a second. OG. Very, very nice initiation from ATF, as always. Yeah, I mean, that forced out Mika's BKB. He forced to just BKB TP away, never feels good. You don't lose the biggest heroes, at the least, I and mean, losing the Pango is pretty big, but you already have some initial items to play with, stalling out the blink uh, by maybe a half minute there with how close Zai is anyway. Yeah. So you still feel all right-ish. Yeah, these two kills are super nice for OG, but the big Radiant thing about this is you saw the Slark just deal water two wards after that. They just took all vision away from Liquid, and OG just wants to buy some time right now. So this is going to help them a lot. Liquid has no vision on map right now. It's going to be quite tricky for them to get out on the map. It's still night time for three more minutes. I think Liquid should try to group up as five very soon, because right now they're getting outplayed on the map. OG, there's your group up. Liquid, they're going to try and make something happen. A five-man smoke up. OG, though, they've got a high ground advantage. BZM was spot up, but Misha, he's going to break the gank. In goes the sun from ATF, trying to start on Boxy. He's such a tanky target. They're throwing everything but the kitchen sink at ATF, but he's still not dropping. Yuragi, meanwhile, he will back off at BZM. He's moving right back in. He's all by himself, however, and will drop. The BZM getting punished for his aggression. This Tiger, he'll be just fine to back out. But they do end up losing that mid lash rack as well as the pause 5 Lich. Yeah, that, that just timed really well for Liquid. They managed to get the roll in with a blink reveal out from Zai right as Amar comes in for the stun. So they're not able to play around that. Immediate stampede to try to retreat. And maybe a little bit of miscom. BZM's already up on the ramp. He's just trying to go for it by himself. It just kind of gives a bit of a freebie out to Liquid. Yeah, he, he could have probably retreated there. But this, this fight was super nice for Liquid. It was a nice choke point for the Tombstone as well. Giving all the vision that they needed. Now, now they got the Aegis, so that's that's perfect. Where do you want to head now with this Aegis up for, for the side of Liquid? Like, is it is it just going to be that farming Aegis that we've talked about before? Is it is it going to be an aggressive kind of Aegis where you want to try and force the fights? What what should Liquid be doing right now? I, I would like them to group up again soon. I think they have really big timings right now. They got the big items that they need. Uh, this draw is not a hero that this cannot fight. This draw is very strong right now. I think they need to involve him. He has the Aegis. So he doesn't have to be as afraid of Centaur jumping. So I, I would like them to group up and try to take back the map. Yeah, I think just going back to how farm Taiga is, I mean, he's got that blink up along with the Aether Lens. We're trying to rush into the Axe along with the Ghost Scepter. So you do have that reach, you do have that follow through to set up for Amar maybe, and just kind of try to run that drawdown. You don't have anything defensive yet for Matu, we all know. Liquid, they don't see the side of OG moving in, but they do eventually find Misha, who does go into the Invis, but it won't matter. BZM, he's a bigger target. The Leshrac once again being slowed up, controlled up, and taken down. Liquid. Perfect fight for them as they find a double once again. More importantly, finding the mid Leshrac, and well, now they're onto the top T1 tower. 
I love how aggressive they're being. They're just grouping up as five. They're going for a smoke off the back of that. Their position very well known, but Amar's pretty far forward if he's not careful. Might back off. Still, that opens up the map, right? It's forcing OG away from just pushing out waves. It's allowing you to take control and potentially maybe line up for a tier two if you find even more. I like the way they're splitting them up. They're just letting their Lina play more as the boss one since he has the travel, so he can always connect and just move together with your draw. Take them up with the less mobile hero. Hi, Gorm is getting caught out there, but does manage to blink away just in the nick of time. Still Liquid moving very aggressively across the map, trying to take those farming positions of OG. So OG now have grouped up, maybe trying to think about a fight, but these last couple team fights just have not gone their way as Liquid, they'll be the ones to back off. They don't have the vision to fight here. Puts them down eventually, but now Liquid, they will play it safe. It's still anyone's game. Like, you've got a 1k net worth lead for Liquid. It could go the, the other way very, very quickly. In with the Aegis up as Liquid. They'll try to make the jump in onto ATF, but a quick link up is going to make sure he's just fine. And I suppose with the Aegis, maybe you could try to pressure this bottom too. I'm just I'm sitting up, Behind, behind, behind. Yeah. He's stuck, he's stuck, he's stuck for you, he's stuck for you. I think the best one is Slash, 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 right now, slash, 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 slash. Nice. Hold the motor, hold the motor. Center TP out. Yeah, SD, 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 go, go, go. Yeah, that charting. Slash, 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 slash is the call. Uh, I suppose that's all you need to say sometimes. Just get the mid lash rack. Yeah, I mean, again, the, the positioning there, not quite where you'd want to be. Although. ATF, big initiation in. He's found the drow range, but Matumba's been protected by Boxy. Can they get the drow up for now? There's the multi shot. ATF dropping low. Boxy still manning up here against Yuragi, but eventually will drops to Matumba. Somehow still alive onto BZM, but he's dropping real low now. The Aegis, it will go down. That's the first line. Mickey, who can he turn on? ATF, he's found the target. That's the one they wanted. Matumba, he'll get the soul rip, but it doesn't seem to be enough. OG, able to punish real hard for Liquid as they keep going. Tiger, he's got the purge out. Mickey, in big trouble. He's another great target, and OG have found it. In fact, they're not done yet, but ATF, he doesn't land the stun. Zai, he'll be on the run. Insania, he's going to TP under the tree line. And will be just fine, but can they get Zai out of there? And the Pango, he'll get in the tree line, but the gaze is there. Lock him down and take him out. OG, they will punish the side of Liquid even with the Aegis up on Matumba, man. Uh, that, that's the perfect situation for OG there, managing to really split up the fight. We saw, as you mentioned, you connect the Lina in with the Travels, you, know, you come in with the BKB, but the saves coming out from Taiga, the investment in the Shadow Demon, with that disruption out, if you can't land the stuns, you don't really do much in that window. Yeah, we, we could also see the strength here of the Lich armor in this fight. The Lash is a lot tankier than you would expect. We know how good this Bloodstone is, how much he heals. But in this fight, we can really see this Lich armor adding up. And this Lash is just walking in. They're not afraid of the Aegis. They took a nice in initiative on the fight. And it really played off here. Yeah, you can see right there, Ma Matu just tries to focus in. He gets a good Hurricane Pike use, but with a Frost armor up, he he's just scratching. BZM, it just doesn't do enough. Very, very tough here for Liquid, trying their absolute best. But when you catch the Drow out, it's, it's just so hard to try and turn the team fight. And ATF, as usual, just doing a fantastic job with his initiations. Always finding the target he knows OG needs to get before they can really force the fight. And with that now, OG, it feels like the ball's back in their court. They control more of the map. Bit of a net worth lead here with 3k. Liquid, again, it's still a very, very close match between these two. It, it just seems like it's almost like a tennis match. The ball's just going one way and the other over and over again. Dota plus wise though, 73% the way of OG. Though I say that, it may change very soon because Yuragi is going to be spotted for a moment, but just with the Drow and the Undying, it doesn't seem like you could really make the jump in. Yeah, I think the, the issue right now for Liquid is holding Yuragi down. He managed to farm up the Axe. He's caught up here on the Slark quite nicely above off Matu's Drow now in terms of farm. And just with all the pounces available, we've seen how much of a struggle it is for Liquid to catch these heroes out with the saves. And now the mobility of Yuragi, I don't think you're going to be able to slay this Fishman in time soon. What, what, what's the solution to kind of keep him locked in with how far he's come after such a slow start? Yeah, the, the downside of OG's draft was the early game and the lack of initiation. They had to the center blink, but at this point, the Slark might just go out of control. He got his items up. They have super good defensive supports to protect the Lash. It's quite tricky for Liquid to take a good fight now. They need the fight to be slow, play around the Tombstone, 
Let the Pango control them. Oh, it might be happening. OG, five man smoke up, they'll move in. Insania, he does get the tombstone down just before he gets caught out. Yuragi will happily get to work, but there's Zai with a very nice rolling thunder. BZM, he'll get disrupted. They'll try to save the day for this left rack as he does BKB up and run. Somehow Insania in the middle of all this is still alive, keeping the tombstone up, and BZM, he cannot TP in time. In fact, Yuragi, he was left behind. Boxy will try to chase, but won't be able to keep up. They will let the Slark go, but it's still a great team fight now for liquid yeah, hey. they work that uh, the smoke comes out they get the angle and you know og they feel confident going in there they're the ones kind of trying to be aggressive but if you can't kill off insania and he's, even if he dies there the tombstone is already down liquid were ready to collapse on top they managed to get a good stun out from mikhail though jump in that's a big target Mike. Can have the invis though with the glimmer cape as they go on to ATF or try for the centaur. Do they have the damage for this tanky man? ATF still tanking through it. Matamba, he's been jumped on. Yuragi trying to do it all by himself. He'll get the shadow dance off. Yuragi's not done yet, but might have to back. He doesn't have the defensive play anymore. Liquid, they will do the same. Decent job of kiting out of that fight. It doesn't seem like you're quite at the level yet where you can actually deal with ATF to start off the team fight. Radiant are scanning. Uh, Amar has nice itemization as well. He has the Halberd against the Drow and the Lina, which counters these heroes really hard. If you get it off first, and the Lina could just not hit there for a very long time. Yeah, it's, it's holding off that damage. And I think that was the big issue as well in that earlier fight near the Cliff Ward where you were disarmed on Matu when he had a Aegis life, then he just couldn't hit. Even if you know, even if he was hitting, he wasn't doing that much damage anyway. And just all the armor coming out now in Amar, like you mentioned, Mike. If you do try to jump Amar with a frost shield up, with a plate mail on top of the Vanguard, he does last a long time. It's really disruptive. You have to watch out for him because his constant hoof stomps are just annoying. I think the longer fight is what Liquid wants to look for. The fight they won earlier where Insania pops his ult and Tombstone. And the fight is a bit slower. They play around the Tomb and the Pango roll. These are the fights that they can win. They are not weak at all. But if the fight is too quick, it's very hard. They cannot burst heroes. There's too much defense on OG. They could somehow kill these supports first would be the best. But it's quite tricky for their backliners to get that close. It's interesting you say that they want a longer fight as well, right? Because you're, you're against Yuragi Slark, which I would assume, with the essence ships just being stacked up, I, I would assume it could, would kind of go the other way. In fact, hold that thought, because Zai is going to make the jump in onto Misha. They've got the dust ups. So the Glimmer Cape not going to do enough. Tiger is there with the disruption, though. Meanwhile, towards the north, ATF, they're going to try once again onto the Centaur, but he is going to be able to stampede away towards the south. Who have they gone on? Boxy, he's going to BKB run. Mikke trying to chase. They want a target. They found a couple. They've got Tiger and they've got Misha. Two supports to drop from OG. This is the fight Liquid want now. Problem is all the cores have already left the building. Yeah, it's the targets you mentioned. You know, they managed to take the supports. They tried to collapse on top from OG. It doesn't feel like Liquid can do too much with this opening though, but they do manage to take control back of their jungle. And I think ideally this is what happens at the start of the fight, right? Just find these two supports and go from there. That, that's the dream for sure. This fight is very nice now to have control of the jungle. The Roche is alive and they're looking to capitalize on these supports being dead right now. Roshan, such a big target to go for here. Would try to get started. Oh. Yuragi is going to make a bit of a jump in, but Camp Town's out still. They are going to chase with the Gust. It will connect, but they don't have the lockdown. Yuragi going to be okay. He's just trying to slow down this Roshan timing. Problem is, it's so hard to fight against that Tombstone. The Yuragi, he's going to pounce in. It's too early, though. He's still going to try and force the fight with the Shadow Dance, but they're not aiming down Roshan. Or are they? Disruptions there, but Matamba, he's got the Aegis up. Yuragi, still alive somehow, gets the pounce away. He will make it out for now as Misha will be the target they go for and they even found bzm in fact atf he got left behind as well it's a decent attempt but maybe it's a little bit too early and liquid they just play around it very well it just goes back to that <laughs> aoe right you feel so confident on the slark with two pounces around he dances a bit he gets it's caught it's inside it's the pit it's with it's a toss it's back it's and the roll just comes in I, 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 his I, team was pretty I'll far to try to save there yeah, uh, it's quite tricky. It's a, it's a very nice attempt. He didn't even die there on the Slark, but he kind of forces his team in there. It, it's a very close fight though. If it goes a little bit different here, maybe Centaur picks up the Aegis and the fight is different, because the Slark did not die here. But the, these fights are very hard to say. It's a very small thing. If Centaur gets it there, maybe the fight is different. It is on top of a Tombstone, so it's a really nice spot for Liquid to fight. 
Because it forces the OG supports out of position if they want to get in there. That's one thing I didn't notice as well. BZM was just caught out the whole time by Mickey and just bursted down on the left track. So you kind of had your eyes in Yuragi, but BZM had just been caught out right in front of the Roshan pit. And without that added damage and control of the left track, it's just... It's a bit rough to try and fight into the side of Liquid. As speaking of Liquid, they've got Gaben's Blessing, a double damage rune at the bot rune spot. It doesn't seem like they spotted out in the end, so it will be left for now. Right after Roshan, of course, as is standard, as is tradition. If they had that double damage, it would be a very fast T2 tower, but again, they just don't have the vision for it. Yeah, it can still be a bit risky. There's some counterplay once the respawns are up from OG. And again, just back to that Lich that Celery mentions. Even just frost armor on a tower slows down your push massively. You're not going to be piercing through any armor on that as a drow. So you just kind of have to throw your bodies forward. And that's, this is stalling out really good for OG. They've managed to get the respawns back up. They can go for a defensive fight if Liquid forces an issue. For now, we'll attack. just kind of keep that farm game up and keep Dyer's holding up here. Is under attack. Uh, Liquid has a long time left on this Aegis. And he'll probably try to use this timing. Mickey is going for a very cool build. He'll go for the pike now. A bit of a later pike. He just bought the Dragon Lance. But it should be very, very effective against OG's heroes. Upside, they do find Yuragi. They're also having a look around north for the Shadow Demon, but he is going to be able to TP out. So Boxy unable to close the gap to find this position five. Is, well, Boxy and Zai eventually just going to back their way out. I think you mentioned there's plenty of time for the for the ages to expire, so no real rush for them. They'll, they'll just take a bit of farm here, farming time for Liquid. 11 to 22 though, 4K advantage the way of Liquid. Still feels like an extremely close game between these two teams. Now OG definitely on the, the more defensive side. Yeah, it will come down to how these fights go. If it's a bit of a longer fight where Liquid can stall out the defensive spells from the OG support, it should be very good for them. OG can get the jump and focus the right targets in a short amount of time. It, it all comes down to the initiation right now, where they can jump. But for now, OG should look to just stall out this Aegis, farm up more items. There's, it's still a very good Slark game. The more items he gets, it's going to be very scary for this Lina and this draw. What's the right target for OG to find? I mean, we've seen Omar get some really big jumps. We, we know Taiga can kind of set up and save as well. But what's the priority when you're OG dealing with Liquid right now? Who has to go first? Yeah. Oh, Light Strike away lands. Mickey. Perfect stun out. Gonna keep moving into the Halberd. Was there to slow him down as ATF? How can you get out of this one? Stampede is there. There's no way ATF. He's trying to run, but the Shield Crash slows him down and eventually he will drop. Very nice stun from Mickey. Oh, that's that's a big one. Just checking the three line man just to find him, and again without the centaur and with stampede popped as well, you've got the window here for Liquid to get play without ages. Push more objectives, maybe just take control of the bot jungle. Look for a skirmish if you so feel OG. Not going to stay clumped up for that. Just work the map as best as they can. And for OG, as you mentioned, it's all about stalling here, Celery. Any big items immediately available for Yuragi that you'd like to see to kind of help him deal with these scores? Not an expert on the Slark items. He had Besher queued up, but he... Yuragi, jump in. He found Matumba. Still very confident is Yuragi. With that Shadow Dance, he'll keep going for a little bit more. Take some stacks away, just pounce his way back up. But Liquid, they're moving back in. Tiger immediately bursted down. The high ground def defense gets more difficult as Liquid, now in a 4v5 situation in their favor, will continue onto the tier 3 tower. And uh, we, we keep saying it, but while the tombstone's up, it feels just impossible to try and fight into. Oh. Amar, he'll still jump in. They do find the lean of a boxy. He's in with a double stun once again. Misha, he'll gate the chain frost off, but it's not going to matter. It will bounce around and do nothing as they found Yuragi. BZM, he's going to be able to TP up, but Liquid, they're still onto that tier 3 tower. I'm not sure if OG really want to try and buy back for this. There's no pressure, right? Like, tier 2 still stand. You lose a lane or axe. Trying to go for the end game here with the respawns. Not really within the zone for Liquid, but you, you have an amazing time on Liquid's end. You still have the Aegis. Gonna be expiring soon. You take one set of racks. You find that punishment. Like Omar, he tries to find that angle. It just doesn't pay off. For for OG here, Celery, you saw that the way that fight unfolded. You mentioned it's all about initiation. Who is the priority for Omar? Because it's feeling a bit tough. Oh. Okay, again, it seems like that's the priority, though, ATF. 
He can start all he wants. The problem is he doesn't have the backup as he's getting slowed up here. The Stampede, it's already over. All the stacks of hypothermia from Matumba Man just going on to Amar as he's trying to run with the Glimmer Cape, but they keep slowing him down. This Centaur just cannot walk away. His BZM, they're going to try. It might be the last time here for the side of OG to try and give this a crack, but how do they get it done? It doesn't look good. They've got a couple buybacks, but with the racks under siege now, they'll be holding on to one more unless Liquid want to keep going. They could certainly try for those T4 towers if they wish, but will they? Yuragi, he's going to back off. Mike, he's trying for the T4 towers. The Frost Shield is going to slow them down just a little bit, but that's all they can pretty much do here, OG. There's the buyback from ATF. That'll be enough for Liquid, I think, or will it be? They'll keep going under the T4 towers. It's still a full B5 situation. BZM is not available yet. Matumba, he's the target. He's got the BKB up, though. It's too hard to take the fight. Yuragi in that Shadow Dance in big trouble. Misha already down. Yuragi controlled up. He is gone. GG is called. Liquid, what a dominant start to this best of three series. It was a bit back and forth as the game went on, but it seemed like Liquid, after they got that secondary Aegis, they just took over completely in this game one. Yeah, and it was a pretty slow start as well for OG there, right? Like the lanes didn't quite go Game number two here between Liquid and OG. OG have brought out something different. Of course, Amar the Filipino, the 16-year-old with 60 years of experience. John, talk to us about this hero. It's the Filipino Oscar coming out from Amar the Filipino, of course. Going to have to live up to that TI legacy that happened last time with the Oscar. So keen to see what happens. You know, it's a bit left field coming out there from OG. Going to be interesting to see just how much they can get. Of course, we have seen Amar play that Oscar multiple times before. So they, they should know what to expect. You know, it's really aggressive. They've kind of kicked up the pace here on OG in comparison to that game one. So do you feel like the corrections here in draft are enough to kind of play this fast-paced game that Liquid has been bringing out? So is it still, OG is still draft, but it's a lot quicker and better in lanes. So I think they did a really good job. The, the interesting lane is probably going to be Husker against Brood if they lane it like that. I'm not sure how that lane is going to go. Brood really wants to hit, but Husker has it disarmed. So that should be very, very interesting. I wonder if there's level one team fight to come out. Looks like ATF is not interested whatsoever. Liquid, they might be more than happy to oblige with a level one team fight, but with OG's heroes, it doesn't seem like they've got the greatest level one team fight for now. Of course, we can get those brood mother stats. Not bad at all. I mean, 64.3 and 57.1%, 60% overall wins. You heard you talk about it as well. It's the one hero that frightens him just a little bit. Uh, it didn't react too much to it, but it is still very scary. And as you can see, Zai, 100% win rate overall here on the brood. Yeah, he's he's had a fantastic time with a lot of heroes. Like again, yesterday we saw his Enigma takes it take its first loss. It was on a massive win streak as well for Liquid while he was on that. So Zai's just been kind of setting that pace. I'm more interested to see Boxy begins. back on that toss because he had an amazing time, although. Tiger, toss stop. That's a good start. Mickey, he's gonna try to run. Shards are out as well. Boxy, he's very good on this task. We saw it yesterday. It's going to be a lot of damage out onto the Tiny, but nothing right home about. In fact, they even denied off the banner rune here with Yuragi. In the end, how many banner runes did they actually pick up? Two yeah. for one. Nice two for one start in the favor of OG. So they're going to be feeling a little bit better going into those lanes. Just have a little bit more to play with as we do take a look at that mid Mike up against a BZM on the Ember. Uh, you mentioned this, Ellery. It's not the worst laning matchup, right? Like the Ember can kind of dance around this. Do you reckon that overall BZM should have a better time or should it draw kind of close to even here? I think some Leshrex can win this lane when they're when they're an expert at this matchup, but overall it should be a free lane for Ember and Lesh. They should both farm. And it's a really, really good Ember game. So even if he would slightly lose the mid lane, I think OG is perfectly fine with it. Since there's almost nothing to lock him down in the mid game. Ball lane. Nine. Damage being dealt to Matumba, but can be no kind of jump in. Tiger, no angle here for the toss back into Omar, and it doesn't seem like he's more than happy to, to get fighting yet. Meanwhile, Boxy, a nice little creep pool going on here. Gonna reset the, the creep equilibrium on his side. Just let one creep through his bottom lane. ATF, gonna take a fair bit of damage, but is gonna be okay in the end. 
Yeah, he's, he starts to drop low, and this is where the Bloodseeker starts to feel good. You don't have the thrust up yet. We do have a lot of early damage and slow is coming out from the side of Liquid, whereas for OG, uh, with a Husker and a Tiny, it does feel like you need a lot of EXP, a lot of levels to really start to play here, doesn't it? Uh, this bot lane is going to be very interesting, I think. If the Bloodseeker and CM get on top of this Husker, they might just kill him. But if they don't kill this guy in time, and they get some prospects on CM with the disarms, it, it could go either way, I think. I'm not sure how this lane should go, or what's gonna happen. Let's go to the top lane, perhaps. We haven't really talked about that one at all quite yet. You can have Boxy there on that. In fact, hold that Thor. That's a lot of damage coming out onto the Tiny. We can have a look at the top lane, though. Boxy once again pulling a creep wave over. Misha unable to really slot down, but just trying to get the aggro of the creep wave. Oh, he's got it as well. Very nice play from Misha, but what a great oh. shards out from Boxy. In the meantime, Tiger does end up going down. I love the shards plays from Boxy. He's always got some kind of concept, some idea to try and get the advantage. And once again, we do see the pull work out in the end. Yep, they, they just get that EXP they need on Boxy, trying to get that build up. Get the space they want for Zai. Your all game, he can kind of twack away, but when you're in that field, when you're in the webs, Zai is not going to feel too scared of trading. He can always run up with Insatiable as well, especially if Misha's dragged away without anyone to stop the Brood. You know, she can just can kind of get on top of that NP if you're not careful. Yuragi could be a fair bit of damage. He just trapped up, standing his ground, trying to TP away, but the Snowball is going to stun him up. Yuragi, he cannot make it out. It is going to be a very strong kill for the side of Liquid. Uh, very nicely done. This Brood is a lot stronger in lane now than what everyone's used to. We have this insatiable hunger getting a lot of buffs, and the more levels it gets in it, the harder it's gonna be in this lane. We'd think it should be a chill lane for Frim, but they have a lot of kill buffs. Boxy, he, he never stops this bloke. Boxy's always going. Snowball not gonna connect on Misha. They'll still chase with Zai, but Misha is gonna be okay. He's getting a, a little bit greedier there with the Snowball from Boxy, and sadly for him, it does not touch the snap fight. Just trying to go for both targets, maybe shove Yuragi all the way back once more. Does give some room to go back for Misha, but it's all the way back to the base for him. Having to TP home, has to walk up with regen. You have that window for Liquid to still maintain that aggression up against OG here. I think overall, it looks like a pretty good start for OG in the lane. The Ember is having a really good time mid. He's going more than even. He was doing a really good job on the first few waves. He really wants to get one water window. Looks like Liquid is not going to give it. They certainly are not. Mickey does take it. How important do you think BZM is going to be here for the side of OG? Like, is he the guy that needs to create the space for, for Amar and Yuragi to kind of get that farm going? Or is it all on ATF to get that farm going? Does, does Yuragi just kind of join the team early? I, th I think this Ember will be making all the space. I think the Huskar and the Fern will be farming up. Fern will be ready to connect at any time. And this Ember has a really good game. So once he gets his level four in slide, I think he'll walk around the map with his supports and cause havoc. Yeah, I think that's the big one for OG. You have a lot of aggression that can come out. In comparison to game one, where you were farming a lot more, trying to get that build up on Lush, you're not as worried about Ember. You just need a couple of items up and you should be good. Although Omar kind of being surrounded. He certainly is. That's a lot of damage out. ATF, he's going to drop. Mikke with a nice rotation as Yuragi top lane. Also going to go down. Once again, Liquid just dominating every single side lane on the map. We saw this last game as well. OG just off to a slower start. And that's a bit worrying. You have a bigger snowball start that can come out here from Liquid with this kind of draft. And you've got Boxy back on that Tusk. He's got some good timings to meet as the support. And considering how good his lane is, he's probably going to have a pretty decent enough blink timing in this game if he's just allowed to kind of have this impact. You already have Yuragi going into the jungle. So you're just ditching out that Broodmother lane. But considering the space for Zai, and that's a lot of utility that he can just build into here. Yeah, Chu said he was a bit worried about the Brood, now he's a little bit more worried, I think, from this start. <laughs> but the, the good thing OG has, if they can get some good power runs on this Ember, he can probably shift towards the Brood lane, and the Furin doesn't have to sit there, because it's gonna be very scary for Furin. Yeah, it just, it can be really annoying. We all, again, we're already seeing him shoved away. He's really behind in CS as well here for Yuragi in comparison. You, you just have such a dominating lane coming out from Zai. They are still trying to poke and prod down Bond. You mentioned not quite knowing what you'd expect from the Husker Titan lane. Do you think this is what you were expecting though? Like uh, Matumba is still kind of finding farm. ATF not really able to stop that too much. I guess it's kind of 50-50. They got a nice kill because Bloodseeker is getting a lot of speed from the other lanes. But 
I guess it didn't really snowball. I thought there was some snowball potential for OG if they got some good toss backs, but it seems like the nukes from the CM and the Bloodseeker are enough to equalize the lane and just keep on farming. And the Liquid. Top two net worths on the board right now. Easy, or rather, Valeshrak, Mickey, and Zai. So, so strong of a start. See what they, they do get going. Like, you, you almost expect another side lane gank very, very soon from the side of Liquid. But now they are paying respect to OG. Mikkei just getting his own farm up. No rush for him. Attack. Zai just can clearly control the top lane as you do want to do on the Brood Mother. And I imagine it's going to be quite a fast T1 tower to be taken here by this Brood. It doesn't feel like you've got the greatest ways of defending, though. They are grouping up a bot lane. ATF in trouble once again as Matumba going to move in, but there's a split team fight going on. Dyer's top lane, top another top fight going on as well. ATF's going to be fine. It seems like Foxy's the one to drop up at top. BZM able to secure one. Zai unable to secure the snap fire kill. Instead, he will be forced to try and run away from BZM, but he's going to be just fine. OG, they do at least get a tusk kill for their trouble. Yeah, the more, the more important thing is now this tower would have already been dead if the Ember didn't go here. So he's going to slow down the Brute, and it makes a lot of space on the map. If this Brute gets his tower too quickly, he'll go to mid. He'll take over the entire map. Oh, I'm sure it's gonna lock down Tiger once again. No way out, surely. He'll toss away. Matumba, he's got so much speed though, and Mickey really just there to make sure they can knock it out. Matumba yeah. Matt, able to pick up another kill here on the on the Bloodseeker. Yeah, you're feeling good in the blood. Matu's got a pretty free lane, Melcher being built up, Javelin already on hand. Uh, bottom network of his own team in terms of cores, but he's Pretty close to Zai and Mika's farm, which is almost is kind of really out there. Radius just not contested, especially Zai outside of that rotation up top. Five to one start. Liquid, I mean, you mentioned that push potential coming out here, Celery. Top tier one still stands. So OG is still managing to find farm. You mentioned a tempo coming out from BZM, though. He does have the over corrosion up, and it looks like he is going to the Maelstrom. Is that all he's going to need? They are clumping down bot, maybe for a bit of a shove in. Matu is alone. Matu, Avalanche there, Cookie is there to follow up as well, the Bloodseeker a massive pick up here for OG and it seems like Matumba Matt has no way out of this one. Very nice set up here from Tiger, ATF very happy to secure that kill. Yeah, very nice map movement, they're not trying to fight on mid, it would be very very hard to take a fight there. They instead just killed a carry and they just gave this tower that Liquid brought a lot of heroes for. Liquid is not slowing down though. They certainly are not. Cookie away from Misha. Avalanche gonna buy some space in the shards. Off the mark. Bit unusual here for Boxy to miss like that as Misha might still run. Mickey in the end gonna be able to close the gap though. So it won't matter. They will still secure the snap fight. Even though Liquid is off to a very good start, OG is doing a good job splitting the map, just farming up their items, not worrying and trying to overreact. Ember deals with the Brute. Huskar and Furin farm their timings and once his Huskar hits his armlet, I imagine they'll try to use that for the smoke and potentially into Broshi if they get a pick off close to it. Easy M. Bit of harassment up top, but he's just kind of playing around with Zai here, just taking more spidelings away from the Brood Mother. This is a remnant to go back to, though Zai really wants to try and bully him and try to make him use that remnant. But now he's going to be forced to back off as Tiger and Boxy both rotating up towards the top lane. So they are going to back their way out, the BZM going to move in. In fact, hold on a minute, they've got Insania on the CM and Boxy. Also going to drop as well, OG, able to find both supports here. Yeah, they get some punishment. A bit of a forward 4A coming out from the side of Liquid, trying to scout around, maybe drop some vision for it. And they do get punched, OG, finding a bit, a little bit of a foothold, getting that build up they'd want, especially on BZM, who is going to be kind of setting up and dealing with Broodmother's early timings with Maelstrom almost done. So for the side of Liquid, and it does feel like they're also more than happy to just kind of farm a little bit here, though. Yeah, they probably feel a little bit awkward about this Ember, because they really want to help their Brood and get this Ember out of there, but they just do not have the heroes to do it. Tiger, mid lane, Avalanche will be out to try and dissuade them from going any further and work out in his favor. Back his way out just fine. An ATF around the corner just in case they need it. Speaking of ATF, his farm, it does feel like it's suffering quite a bit. In 4.3k net worth, he's got the armor up, so maybe he could try to fight with this team, but it's a little bit too far behind, I think. As well, OG, do you think they need to group up now and try to get these fights going, or is it okay for them to just sit back and maybe hit a, another kind of timing? This, Hus this Huskar here is very tricky. Usually, if you don't know this hero that well like me, I think he has armlet, I guess it's time to go. But this hero is one of the quickest farmers with armlet. If he gets to just farm his triangle, just farm some camps. 
So Liquid does not want to let them just farm these camps. So if they can close down the map, then that should be really good for them. OG does want to use this Huskar at some point. Either let them farm a lot right now, or work a move into the Roche. But it's looking pretty hard with how the map is set up. Yeah, I mean, just the movement of Liquid. They've taken over the top jungle. They're starting to pressure onto mid. There's no real space for OG to farm. In fact, Taiga gets caught out. Better than ATF getting caught out, though. He'll tank the gank here for the Huska. ATF gonna stick around. In fact, there is some rotations coming in. You've got Misha on the side. Just making sure they protect that tier 2 mid tower as you, you do have a less rack and a Broodmother after all. You could take that tower very, very quickly if you are liquid. But for now, they'll be satisfied with, with the Tiger kill. Yeah, it's not the biggest in the world, but again, they're, they're getting so much space out. They've taken over top jungle, the webs are all down, Zykon dance in and out there. Uh, triangle, it's not somewhere that they have really gotten to. OG does have wards watching, but they're not also able to stack up as much and build the resources up for their own build-up. Right now, Yuragi is just kind of farming in the opposing triangle anyway, and just trying to avoid as much, but it's only him that can kind of go out there. Everyone else? Stuck with dealing what, getting what they can from the creep waves right now. Yeah, the OG cores are not suffering too much. They're doing a really good job. One hero that's really not having a nice time is this Tiny. He's very, very low level. Haste. Getting up this blink is going to be near impossible. There's nowhere for him to farm at all. Tumba. Bottom lane, gonna move in, ATF, he'll cop the rupture, he's kind of forced the man fight this one out, but there's surely no way. He will try with the life break, but it's gonna be nowhere near enough. Mickey able to secure the kill. More rotations, BZM chains out, Matamba, he's a big one, and they will find him. The Bloodseeker is gonna drop as OG, looking for a bit more. With the Mortimus Kisses, they'll find Insania on that Crystal Maiden. That'll be a second as Foxy now, trying to TP up with the chains, with the toss in, is gonna work out in the favor of OG. It's Liquid, they do find one, but they give up three. Yeah, that's, a, that's a huge swing coming out from OG. Radiant Seeing that opportunity to punish, still having that TP point to play with, and just managing to know that Matu is really vulnerable there. Doesn't have Rupture to threaten with. His teammates all kind of use their spells as well. They've got the opportunity to push off the back of it. There was a bit of a split push going up top from Zai, but not as fast as what OG's accomplishing down bot. And this does open up the map a little bit more to get some more gold flowing their way. That was a very cool move they did. They, they pick off the Huskar, and Liquid felt very safe after that. The Bloodseeker is just farming the lane, but OG is just ready. They, they're not afraid their Huska died, but they're just there. Snap did not even have 6 yet, he gets 6 from that kill. That's super good for it to come back for them. Mid lane, Mickey, all alone right now. They're gonna move in. That's a lot of damage coming out, but the snowball, it's gonna buy a bit of time. Mickey, gonna try and turn here, but there's surely not enough damage. He will drop Matumba. Gonna try and punish. Misha is down. How far can you go? They find another. BZM, he does take down Boxy, and it's gonna be another successful team fight the way of OG. This Ember is popping off right now. He's getting all the kills, he's involved in all the fights. And they just have no stuns to kill him yet. It's gonna be quite hard for them to deal with him. Yeah, like you mentioned, it does feel like a fairly free Ember game here. And every single time that BZM just shows up, it doesn't feel like they can handle him. Maybe you could try to rupture the threaten. doesn't feel the best against the Ember, and your supports are gonna have to try to focus in on that highly mobile target. Maybe try to set up for Mike. And again, it's not an easy task. Even game on the kill board, 9-9, nine nine, it does feel like Liquid. They've managed to drop a little bit of some momentum. OG, they are starting to ramp up off the back of BZM. He's got travel stuff. He's ready to just all, be all over the map. That's a very go cool build. You don't see that very often nowadays. BZM, taking off the devil. Let's get caught out. But right is there. He might be gone, and he will be. Oh, that's a bit of a caster's curse there from you two. That wasn't my fault. I'm out of this one. <laughs> Frostbite, just a little bit too strong. Yeah, and that's the one hold, right? You, you, if you, one of the supports can be on top and you've got some sort of follow-up, you've got the space to kind of get that done. With that kill, Liquid straight into Roshan here as well, popping everything to take out that objective. OG, not quite in the position to contest without that Ember. Yeah, that's a massive kill for them. It's true, the Frostbite can still control the Ember. If the Ember has any fight in any vision, you will have free reign. But this was, this was amazing. The pickup was next to Roche. They get to take the Roche, and now they should be able to control the Ah, they need to deal with the lanes first. Uh, they shouldn't go on the enemy jungle yet. Just push out the lanes. 
and potentially group up again after that. That's where the Nature's Prophet really shines. Uh, Yuragi is just applying some pressure, trying to force movement to Lom. Nice shots out. They're gonna find Tiger on the Tiny. They'll try to toss away Boxy, but it won't make a difference. Tiger's still caught and will drop. A thousand of your kind. Very interesting build by the Furin as well. He went to drums first and then a mage layer. Yeah, it, it does feel like he's focusing more on maybe just trying to split push control into a blood torn for some more damage output later on and just mitigate whatever Liquid might want to pump out here and maybe instead relying on the damage coming out from Amar, coming out from BZM with a Husker and the Ember and just kind of play more of a secondary role, buying out space and map, eating up that split push when he can and just slowly but surely ramping up those resources for down the line. It, it does feel like this kind of build might um, might not show as much in the middle of these rotations, though. Oh, Misha, wrong place, wrong time. He's gonna get caught out of the Spiderlings. We'll get to work, though. That is a lot of damage coming up. Easy just stealing all the Spiderlings away is now. Foxy still trying, but they will eventually find him. It's gonna be a one for one. Zai needed to back off earlier on. As he, he just didn't want to deal with the whole side of OG. So it's just gonna be a support for a support trade. Interesting. Taiga is not even trying to go for the blink kills. He was getting somewhat close, but he just opted to buy a veil instead and fully play around the Ember, not commit his hero too deep in the fight. Yeah, I think they realize they've got enough jump in. Hey, he's got some. Yeah, yeah. Find the safe. One HP, one HP. Guys. That's a fight. I'm standing again in three seconds. Oh, bloody. Hey, he's got some. He did use the blood zone. That was a very good call. <laughs> yeah. Very true. Radiant we'll smoke up. Liquid. In they go. Boxy, to front line. ATF. This is a big one. The Husker huh? in trouble. Snowball will be there. The split earth is out as well. And ATF is just going to melt. No chance of survival for ATF. They, they get a big one. Um, didn't even manage to arm the toggle. Good. Chain stuns coming out from the side of Liquid. And because of that kill, they have the security to force onto an objective. They've still got Aegis for two and a half minutes here as well. But they're not even playing around with Mika. Just having Matsu stand up front with the protection of his BKB and force OG to kind of make a choice. They're clumping around here, but it doesn't feel like they might be, they, they could find a clear angle if they're not careful. Yeah, you talked about the Furin splitting a lot. The Lesh adjusted his build a bit. He had the overclub first, but he went for the travels to deal with the splitting. Quit. No group dumps. In lane BZM. Tiger, Nisha, they're all there. Shard's gonna give it a bit of vision. Robsha immediately out onto the Ember, but he's just fine to back his way out. Tiger. And Misha's still hanging around, but outside of vision, instead they find Yuragi on that Prophet, but the cookie away is going to be enough as Tiger makes the jump in onto Foxy, but Foxy, he'll jump right back in onto that Tiny. It should be a one-for-one, one, but they still haven't got that Tiny down yet. In fact, now they do, and they found Yuragi on the Nature's Prophet. They even found Misha. Matamba, he loves these kind of team fights. Everyone just dropping low. He can rush forward every single time. And OG, they, they're still not ready with the Husker. Uh, the, the big thing for Liquid there as well is that Maku doesn't have to pop the BKB in these fights. He has a fresh nine second charge just not being utilized because he doesn't need it. So the next time around, if OG wants to re-engage, they have a huge window where Maku is just going to feel too big. You're not going to be able to touch him. The Ember's damage is not going to be there. And Liquid, they, they just see all these opportunities. They're taking this map on really well. They've got a 5k lead up. We are seeing Amar kind of try to use the space to farm up, working towards the BKB. But oh, I think oh. they spotted them with the daytime. Uh-oh, ATF, he does get caught, and he's gonna get taken out. So close yet so fast. Liquid, they are looking very strong now. 5k advantage, 17 to 11, and we, we get to see this Husker work. Yeah, the, the impact just isn't quite there. He's still busy, busy kind of trying to farm up. You mentioned Celery, you know, once the armlet's up, maybe you're much more willing to fight. You just go back to going back farm. And again, that unfortunate timing on spotting out the vision for the side of OG, but very fortunate for Liquid finding the punishment. For Amar, what, where do you go from here? Is it really just the BKB? Is that it? 
as they look for more. They are gonna look for more top lane. Tiger is gonna get caught. Matumba able to pick up his fourth kill. As in they go mid lane. Misha trying to cook it in. BZM, he'll join the fray, but can you actually fight this? It doesn't feel like it. Boxy's too tanky. Zai, he'll keep chasing, but BZM will run it away. So they continue the chase. The slow is there. BZM, how do you juke your way out of this one? He'll just run south. He has a remnant north. Liquid, they're going for tier three towers. They they know how strong they are right now. The Ember is still having a great time, but Liquid realizes it's only the Ember. They do not have to be afraid of these other two cores yet. They didn't hit any timings. And this Ember cannot 1v5. He's not big enough. Liquid is really high network from all their free cores. Dyer's top tower has fallen. Yeah. It, what's the condition now for OG? I mean, Liquid, they've been playing fantastic, but for OG, how do they hold? They're going for a smoke play. Is it pickoffs they need as they look? Yeah, speaking of pickoffs, Foxy. They're going with the snowball. A nice blood ride set up from Matumba. Does he want to fight this one? He got the silence onto BZM, so they might be able to afford to try it. In fact, that stuns out as well. He bashes the perfect time into the split earth, but it's not right on time. Very close from Mikkei. Great attempt. At least for OG, they do get away with the support kills. Now, Mikkei, pretty deep. Does get caught out. Is getting blocked as well by the Treants. Will still move back in onto Tiger. They'll find the Tiny. In they go onto Yuragi. Through the BKB, they've got the rupture. Yuragi surely can't find his way out. He'll get bashed up. Into Misha they go now. Liquid. They won't keep going. ATF does show up. A buyback will be expended as BZM does at least find Insania on Tiger. He'll get back into the game, but this buyback, it doesn't feel like it amounts to much. Yeah, the, the tricky thing is, getting back into the game is quite hard right now. They really want some skirmish fights and some pickups, but the Tiny doesn't have a blink, so they don't have any tossback potential. The Huskar is getting closer to his BKB, so they might just they have to try to wait for it. He might have a little bit of space to farm it right now. But Liquid is not slowing down, so they might just take back the map very soon, once Lesh's BKB is ready again. Yeah, there, it doesn't feel like there's any big reason for Liquid to back off. They've managed to force out some buybacks. They haven't really taken any objectives just yet as well. The high ground still does stand. So you still have a lot to go for in these lanes. Maybe wait out the security of next row, Sean. Only a few Radiant seconds left until we see that respawn timer, although. Yeah, Zai is still very, very confident. He will lose the spider links. Oh, BZM even picking up a Battle Fury now, just really trying to abuse the, the Slider Fist against those Spider Links. You can see how easily he clears them up now. I suppose the Battle Fury build very effective as well for the high ground defense. And now they have a nice comeback potential. If all these spiders are stacked with the heroes, he just gets a Rampage in one slide. <laughs> I mean, they, they, they're gonna have to clump up pretty tight, but you know, in a tight spot like the high ground force could be a possibility coming out there for OG. Really good switch out from BZM. How about the other heroes though? Like uh, you mentioned, it's only really BZM having that good time. Um, anything else you'd like to see out from, say, Uragi, ATF, or BKB, he'll know? Like again, he's been focused so much in this game. They do not want to give the Tiny a game whatsoever. Tiger's still trying to bomb up the blink, but just can't get anywhere near us. Now Misha is also getting caught and just taken down. Both supports once again gone for the side of OG, and Roshan's up. That's the big one. Yeah. Like we're just taking over the map, taking the second Roche now, which is going to be a big timing. Pascal will have his BKB ready after that, but it's it's going to be hard for him to get impact even with this BKB. If they realize he has his BKB now, they will just rupture him in the fight. And if they kite him a bit, his BKB will just go off without being able to do a lot. Yeah. And you've got, again, that second Roche with a shard ready to go here for Liquid. So they could look for the high ground play now. You can see all the spiderlings scurrying around on the mini-map. Just getting some vision out as they collapse onto the mid. And for OG, I mean, this high ground hold, it, it feels really difficult. Like, you can clear the creep wave. BZM has to play an insane game. And maybe eventually, as you mentioned here, Celery, if they do get a blink up on the Tiny, there's some counterplay there, along with the BKB, of course, Anamar being freshly built up. They've been doing a good job splitting the map, so they're not falling behind that far on the course. The big trouble is this Tiny just never gonna have his blink. But if, if they can hold long enough with this Ember Battle Fury, and the Fury gets more items up, this hero does skill really well. OG only being given a 10% chance here to win out this game by Dota Plus, a very rough affair. Liquid 90% at the moment. You could certainly agree with those stats. I mean, with the Aegis up, 
it, it doesn't feel like they've been contested for so long now and Bozai is keeping tabs. OG are smoked up. They will find the Broodmother. That's how they'll get started. They haven't got so much damage yet though. Zai, he's actually quite tanky. And now BZM, he does avoid with the Remnant, but they've got another target. It's going to be Tiger, who does get ruptured up and once again is going to drop. It's just so hard because it feels like Tiger. He wants that blink up to be able to find some kind of toss back and make a comeback happen, but they are not giving him any breathing room. He's just he's just had a rough time, right? Like ever since going for that bail, just trying to amp up the damage coming through. It's just completely counteracted by the pipes and that rage pack coming out from Zai. Doesn't High ground doesn't take too long here too. Uh, Liquid is not going to give them any space to breathe. Just force everyone at least back in base and potentially just commit on this. They have really big timings right now. They have the Aegis. They got everything they need. Here we go, Liquid, onto the high ground once again. The tier 3 tower not going to last very long as the Tumblr's just hitting so hard along with the left track, but a nice cookie. No, it's not going to land. Tiger still with the avalanche toss, is there. Mickey falling low, but has the bloodstone. Will take down the tiny once again as Yuragi. Boxy in the back line is at least going to drop, so it might force Liquid to reset and come back another day. They still almost have three minutes of the Aegis up, so they can't afford to do this and just wait out their... their their task maybe not bzm he does get caught on the ember he is gone oh boy oh man no buyback out in bzm either so they can just again go back here multi objectives from liquid's end and they have a full minute where they don't have to worry about their creep wave being cleared out but they don't have to worry about the ember just kind of looking for that back line these softer targets and just try to melt them away you do still have the chance for Yuraki to kind of, you know, go to a lane and try to work it into OG's favor, but it's tough. Bottom, bottom lane, here we go again. Okay, it's traveled in. Bottom, bottom racks, under, under siege, Dyer's they'll force the cliff out. OG, been very patient with trying to force a fight, but they've got to get it done sometime soon. Got it. Bottom it's, gonna be, it's gonna be very rough to hold on to this right now. I think Liquid might even force for the third side right now. They still have this Aegis, they don't have to wait for anything. Rupture is there onto ATF, just making it hard for him to even think about jumping in. It's now mid T3 tower under siege. Liquid just so calmly taking these structures, knowing the advantage they have. 17k, Aegis up for another minute and a half. OG, they're gonna try and fight now. They'll start with Mikke, try to find the first life, but the Wraith Pack is gonna be out. It is denied off by Misha. Liquid, they are not backing though. They want to keep going. Mickey just so confident, but may lose the first life now. No, in fact, never mind. Four Staff will be there. He's going to be just fine. Yeah, I think the one bright side here for OG is that they didn't have to kind of expand anything or lose anything here. But you're at the point where even just going outside your own base is very annoying. Full Ags up on Zai. These little traps are just going to give a lot of information out and just make it so hard for OG to try to make something happens, say if they wanted to smoke outside, it, it gets a lot tougher with just getting trapped up in the middle. Yeah, this Lash picked up the Hex as well now. He has the Blink Hex, and the Ember realized he is the one that is, that is having the free game. He cannot go too defensive, so he doesn't have anything for this Hex or for a Silence. So this this might be might be getting close to the end if this Lash can get a good jump. No. There it is, they jump in. Koki was there, BZM! Oh. oh, he was the one caught out! Matamba, he keeps bashing on command. BZM, he's down for 90 seconds. Minute and a half without buyback available on the end, but this could be it. He doesn't have the gold right now. Liquid, there'll be two Raxes up. OG, they are trying to split push the best they possibly can, but the creeps are still in their base. In fact, never mind, backdoor will kick in. Liquid, they won't have the time to go up the T3 yet, but Amar trying to fight Mickey. Has he gone too far? ATF, he's gonna fight Boxy. Onto Mickey they go. They might have the last track, and they do. OG, they'll find another but Matamba. He got the rupture off. He does pick off ATF. He's got the Husker down, and now the bash is coming out again. You're right. He, he cannot escape Matumba, man. It, it's so difficult for OG. I mean, they're trying to make space. It, it's, it's, this is what they need to do. Try to stall out, force the back door to kick back in, but they don't manage to hold it. The creep wave comes back in. They lose some very big heroes, and they don't have a solution. Buybacks are ready on the respawn of BCM, though. They're going to try something. OG. See the buyback up from Yuragi, that's going to be enough for them to back off. Rather liquid, that is. Could immediately just out of there. Tiger's trying to make some magic happen. He got rid of his veal to pick up the blink now, after all. 
and this is what they need. With some potential good prospects, they still have a chance. You always have a chance until the game is over, so you just gotta keep your head high, keep trying. Yeah, look for that opportunity to drag Let's someone see. away. You've got the damage follow through to play with anyway. It does feel like your investments here onto Amar, onto BZM can pay off now. Like they, they do have some good right click on hand. For Liquid, I mean, your tour axe is up. You've taken the tier three top. Do you reckon you try to force something here or do you just wait for Aegis once more? Uh, I think first of all, you don't want to give too much space to OG, so potentially just do a move to take back the top side of the of the map. They already have a nice ward there. And if they do get any pickoff, they can just insta go to the base. Maybe they feel strong enough, they don't even have to wait. They can just go right now, get a good team fight. Hey, they've got to be careful, Liquid moving up. They're already in, Mickey, he's right out onto the support. In fact, BZM, he barely avoids the stun, but Misha's already gone. ATF gets shredded here by Matumbo's Yuragi. Is he going to get out? Just barely. No bashes for Matumba. But there's two down, Amar does not have buyback available. There is only one lane of barracks left in Liquid. They're going right for it. Yeah, just nothing to stop them. BZM, he's got to dance around here really hard, but not even the tossback potential is at play. No buybacks available. Respawns are short, though. Oh, BZM, he's been side by fight. Stop, this could be it. Liquid will take him down. He has the buyback. He's going to commit it, surely. No hold for now. Hoping Liquid may back off, but Liquid, they're looking for those T4 towers. Such a dominant series so far for Liquid. OG, they've got one last chance. They'll wait for ATF to respawn first, but they've held down Misha. Once again, the Snapfire is going to melt. No buyback available. Yuragi now getting caught in front of his fountain, but they'll move back towards the T4. They'll see ATF moving in on this Husker, trying to find a way, but Zai's making it so darn hard to close the gap. In fact, he's even TPing towards the CM, trying to find at least Insania, but the Glimmer Cape, they don't have the detection. Instead, they go on to Zai on the Broodmother, but Zai, he'll man up. There's the disarm out from ATF. Meanwhile, on the side, BZM, he's going to drop to Matumba Man. Zai, still running, just can't get caught. They'll toss him in. ATF, still trying his hardest, but it's not looking good. It seems like Liquid, they might have this series in the bag. There's four down, GG's called. GG is called. Liquid, they've done it once again, this time 2-0 against OG. And OG, I mean, they're a fan favorite here at TI-11, but Liquid proving to be way, way too strong here today. They played really well, synchronized so well, they kept the lane shut down very nicely, and Zai just managed to pop off really well in the Brood. There were no solutions coming out there from OG, and Liquid just play a clear game. For OG, I mean, this squad's come far. I think at the start of the DPC year, you know, new roster, expectations were kind of middling, then they go to the Major, they win a lot of tournaments on their own. They've got a lot of promise, but for today, Liquid just comes out on top, the better team. Seems like Liquid out-strategized them today, and I don't think OG played bad at all. I think both teams put on a good show, but the strategy part made it quite hard to play the game. And yeah, both teams can be happy with their performance. But yeah, someone had to go today. Absolutely, and great sportsmanship here on cameras. Both teams just hugging it out, obviously, very close with each other, these two teams. With that, we are going to head back to our panel and see what they have to say about this game number two. Thank you very much. And yes, welcome back to the panel. OG are going to be leaving us today. And Team Liquid won't let Matumba Man retire. Like, we need a few more games. They're going to get every ounce they can out of him and a fantastic performance by Liquid. How is it going, guys and gals at the panel? Hello. I'm, I'm enjoying these moments as well, don't worry. Yeah. Here we are. We're, we're a little bit back in. There's Zai. He got to play the Brood on the second game. <laughs> seems so stoic when he comes off uh, matches. He's like, yes. This yeah, of is, course. You know, he takes it very seriously. He's like, this is my job. Especially after you play a Brood, you know, you have to play it cool. You have to play like you're not a total... You know, playing that brood, just dominating <laughs> last pick. <laughs> the way you uh, <laughs> deviated after total there. Yeah. Um, but Liquid, yeah, uh, a 2-0 win. Was this expected? Because actually in a previous interview, I remember Liquid just saying, you know, I think it was Matthew who was just like, well, actually, we kind of didn't expect to be here, so we're just happy. He was just happy he's still playing. And now he's got another match today. Probably not expected to be as convincing, right? Yeah, no, I feel like each time they're, they're playing right now in this low bracket run, it's like they're ready to... They would obviously want to get to the finals for Matu. They're, as soon as they lose, Matu's going to be retiring. We're going to lose him from our scene, at least competitively. 
So I feel like it's a blessing. Right? So yeah, like <laughs> it's actually scary to watch them play because like I don't want to have to be on a panel when we're like talking about Matthew's retirement. So I'm hoping that they do you know one more series. Maybe I'm not working that series, so I don't have to talk about him and you know his exit from competitive. But still, no, I, ha I have a heartwarming quip ready for that panel. So just you know. Okay, so we'll put I'm good. I'm good. Put me on it. No matter when it happens, it's a heartwarming story, and his career is filled with, with success. Right. So. Yeah. So what about this game? Because BZM got off to a great start on the Ember. The problem is, it's the only hero that got off a good start, right? It's the BZM from the mid lane. The mid lane kind of evened out, but he made some really significant rotations to bring them back into that game afterwards. But it doesn't matter. Your top lane is getting crushed. Your Nature's Prophet is literally in the jungle minute five. He's being destroyed. Misha gets his level two way too late. He doesn't get that cookie to get him out of the shards. Bottom lane. TGov didn't go any better, right? Yeah, unfortunately not, but you have to give OG a lot of credit for what they've been able to achieve throughout this DPC year. You know, they're the, the different players coming in, of course, OG before this was a lot of big names and everyone was like, kind of going, oh, is this OG going to do well? And now they get to their first TI, they lock in a top eight. Sure, they didn't get to go further, but it was still a very impressive season for OG and what they've been able to do with new talent, new players and stuff. So again, commendable stuff on that front. Yeah, a top eight, do you think, uh, I mean, obviously not going to be overly thrilled with it, but, you know, do you think they bought everything they could to each game, Sheeped? I would like to say so. I think, like T says, I mean, OG's had a really good year winning the majors, giving them that confidence, because that was something they did lack. And as younger players, of course, this has been the whole story of them throughout the year. OG are just, you have to be proud of where they've gotten to. And next TI, you know, they'll have improved even further. You see Amar this tournament expanding his hero pool, right? It's something that before it was just, okay, he's the Viper, the Timber, and the Razor guy, and now he's busting out his other uh, stuff, Sand Kings, and so on. And yeah, like they just have, they just need more time to grow and, and they're doing a really good job. Yeah, they definitely have the flair. Like yeah. being so young, the young blood coming into the scene. Also, who else picks Huskar on the offlane? It's not something that we see very yeah, often. Yeah, and true. in an elimination game. You know what's yeah. worse? He's actually, entire, his entire time being at TI, he's been playing Huskar on EU servers. So he's playing on 200 ping from mm -hmm. Singapore to EU, playing offlane Huskar. I had to play against it in a pub, which <laughs> I inevitably then lost to, which was really sad because I knew he was on the ping. But yeah, so I think, yeah, it's just fun seeing what they can do. And yeah, look forward to them bouncing back in the next season, keeping the heads up. Yeah, there will be, uh, I'm sure, more from OG next season. But we get more from Liquid now because we're going to go over her winner's interview with Boxy. Boxy just walked off the stage and an incredible 2-0 performance. What was the first thing you said to me? I said, congratulations, you must be so happy. And you said it's a little more complicated than that. I mean, of course I'm happy. But I felt like they didn't really get to play their best. I think the pressure kind of got to them in a way. I feel like the OG we played maybe one month ago felt a lot stronger than this so i'm sure they i know how it feels like to lose without playing up to close to your full potential and that feels really bad so i feel bad for tommy but i'm of course super happy we won you know you never know what to expect uh we of course respect them a lot so it was in in some way easier than i thought it would be you know but yeah I don't know, happy. We have uh, another game today, so I'm trying to not to get too relaxed, I suppose. Yeah. There is a weird sense of having to balance everything, yeah. and I know the, the confidence level has to be tough when you start in upper brackets, and then you've got to get knocked into lower bracket. How did you guys, it feels like you're playing back to your swagger. How did you guys kind of regroup as a team to do that and play so well? I mean, I think the best we played was probably during the LCQ for like qualifying to TI. Yeah. Yeah. I think these games were better. I think our games against Aster, we were a bit timid, pressured maybe, a little scared. I think they're obviously a good team. And you know, every team has like strength and weaknesses against each other. How we bounce back, I don't know. It sucks to lose. And you kind of do like some more soul searching. There was a lot of like uh, trying to realize why we lost against Aster in such a poor manner. And to apply like things that we need to do better in the other series. I think against Entity it was not as clean as it was today. So hopefully we'll keep like the trajectory upwards. <laughs> awesome. Well, I thank you again for talking to us, and thanks for always showing why Dota is so amazing. You're like happy for yourself, but sad for your friends because you know what it feels like both sides. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm more sad for a team I know could do better. I guess. Yeah. That's yeah. I mean, for Tommy too, but like sure, the, re sure, the rest, sure. you know, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Cares about the rest of them, my guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. We'll see you again in just a little bit. All right. Thank you very much. Back to you guys.
Thanks, Casey. Yeah, Liquid inch closer to making it into the finals weekend. Uh, they've still got one more match coming up later today against Thunder Awaken. But now we're going into a all Chinese affair. And this is going to be very interesting. I have a lot of experience. Love it over there. I've always had a good time in China. So please welcome out the first team. It's PSG LGD. LGD are going to be taking on Asta as they come out to the stage. Winning this will put them into the finals weekend. But as I said, their opponents are going to be a tough one to beat. Here come Asta. tournament until yesterday's loss versus Tundra Esports. Let's see if they can pick themselves up and go back with a little bit of momentum. But of course, they're playing a team that they are very, very familiar with. And talking about familiarity, Sheeped, what have you got for us? All right, I have a little story. So back in Tour 2 of the DPC, uh, Aster 2 would LGD. And in a post-game or post-series interview, uh, Pichu, the pos 5 of Aster, uh, was a little bit flamey. He used a rude nickname to refer to Ame, and he said he looked forward to LGD coming back and stomping them 3-0. So we go forward to the regional finals of that tour, and LGD 3-0 them. And it was very funny, and Ame comes out in this interview of his own and is very cocky. And this is a guy that when he speaks in his pub games, people call it a medical miracle because he just doesn't speak. And he comes out here and says, yeah, we, we gave them those two wins in the DPC. Um, he knew that they could beat them, and he wanted to remind them who they were after they got a little bit too cocky. Um, and it, w it was just a, a really cool show of personality between these two teams that I like to see out. And like Pichu himself on Aster, he is a bit of a troll. This is the guy that during the Arlington Major, he was the one that called uh, Amar ATM. And this actually even has links to the Chinese community where um, Chinese fans, when Ame starts to feed, they will refer to him the same way, ATM, but with an E on the end to be closer to his name as well. So I love seeing that kind of banter and trash talk come a little bit to do the you, stage. Do you think it's uh, kind of nice fun trash talk? Oh, or yeah. Do you, or do you actually think these teams are like, you know, we actually don't like each other that no, much? Come on. No, way. So, so these two teams are definitely true rivals. Like having worked Chinese DPC for like two years now, um, they're definitely sorry. bitter rivals up on top. At the same time, though, like, they've been instructed on how to conduct themselves on the interviews, which is also very interesting. Like they actually had some, uh, they actually had some lessons on oh. how to how to present the team and everything else. So it's even more interesting when Shippo shares the story in which uh, he's a little bit banterish. But also, it's like then we follow through. Like, like I was speaking to you know, Leon Arthur. He's like the Western Dota community's connection to like the Chinese memes and stuff. And basically, we're in agreement that this isn't kind of a happy series for China at all. You know, the fact that you have Asta, a team that it used to be a little bit more memed on in the scene, but recently with their performances and kind of stepping up at TI, they've kind of gained the respect of the community. PSG, Faith Beyond, retiring after this one potentially. They don't, don't want to get them knocked out, so this, what could have been a more of a meme game, at least in the community, in the current kind of meme game, it's like, no, this is a Samba series. This is like, we don't want anyone to go out. We want them both to go as far as they can, because they both deserve, at least in their community, to, to get to the finals. All right, and I got good news for you guys, by the way. Yeah. It's been told. We can't find Suns Fan and Cinderin, so we might be doing the draft. It wasn't this schedule, but it's improved my day. I'm sure that <laughs> I'm sure they actually might be found, but we will be going and doing the picks and bands here. And I, I know you uh, really wanted to do that, Sheep, because you've been following these teams a lot. But going to PSG LGD, what's the kind of storyline with the players? Because uh, there's an uncrowned king, people say. Yeah, the uncrowned king called Ame or at me, like Sheepo said, <laughs> sometimes. Like, uh, he's always getting close to this TI championship. You're always getting close to the crown, to the ages, but uh, it kind of eludes him, at least in the last couple of years it has. And, 
I, I is it three know. times? He's been three times finalist, but never won. Yep. TI. So, so, it, so yeah. far. And we also have another kind of retirement uh, storyline here with Faith Bian. Exactly. This is. It's the fact that potentially this team, I think they are currently, they have the most games played as an active five roster. Beast Coast was second to that. Of course, they're not like top. I think first place is like the load of Alliance Day back in the day. But the fact that this team, they've been together for so long, they've been trying to find that success and like they haven't had incredible success. Just not got that Aegis. You ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Here we go. It looks like we're ready for game number one. G L G D versus Team Aster. Game one. P S G L G D's turn to ban. Oh, hello, uh, Suns fan here with Cinderin, and we got my boy Celery here from Game and Gladiators, who. I don't believe you talked about this in the previous cast, but you'll be donating all of the money that you're making at TI for an animal sanctuary. This guy is legit, legit human being. Animals are better than humans, right? Mm, I think we're also animals, right? No. Nope. Uh, it's gonna keep well, it equal. He's an animal, that's for sure. We play Dota. <laughs> that is very true. As we have a very important match, there's only gonna be one Chinese team left at TI after this series, gentlemen. What are your thoughts on uh, these two juggernauts going at each other. So, in inside the Chinese region, just internally, uh, I, I want to say the last year, year and a half maybe, uh, most of the time, Aster has been one of the juggernauts, and then when they've come on the international stage, they've kind of failed to produce the same results that they have back home. Uh, so in a way, the fact that Aster have, you know, picked up international steam and they're doing better in international competition and the fact that they're facing a Chinese team here might be good news for them. It might be a good matchup because against LGD, they've been looking pretty solid online for most of the most of the time. Yeah, LGD also play, played one series today, so that could be in their advantage. They're already warmed up. They're, they're feeling in the zone today. But if Aster prepared well, maybe they use the rest. So. We'll have to see what the draft brings. If you were Aster in this instance, how would you prepare? Would you be like, PSG would you literally just pub LGD's beforehand? Uh, I would let the players turn. just just play, play a pub, maybe a scrim, just to relax a bit, just warm up, and the coach can look at the game. I don't think a player should look at the game because watching takes a lot of energy. If you're watching seriously and you're looking at what is happening, mm -hmm. and then you're just you're also tired, but you didn't even play. Yeah, so I don't think that's a good plan. I think Actually. you should chill. Ten seconds. Uh, just be ready when the game starts. We get to see Primal Beast, who has been banned Five seemingly every game for the most part. Uh, is he still as strong as we thought he was, or is there a reason he's getting through? Well, he was uh, he was very good yesterday when you had Ace play it. That's for sure. That was oh, a yeah. pretty standout performance from him in that game. Um, despite Emma, was it? Did you have it twice? Uh, we, we had it only once. In we had it only game. once. And that was the game that it was kind of counter pick too, right? They, they got multiple counter picks against it and you still made it look really good. So Yeah, the, the cool thing about this hero is you can always flex it on offlane and mid, and even on four if your players can play it. And this, this hero doesn't really lose many lanes. Unless it's, it's almost impossible to pick lanes where this hero cannot farm. You can almost always farm, you can always play boss four and roam. This hero, it's just very, very nice to start the draft with. Very old school combo on the Shadow Demon Lina that used to be the old Dota 1. Actually, it was Sven Lina as well, the two of them. But you get the disruption into LSA. Uh, I mean, an immediate Ember pick, despite the Demonic Purge being able to purge the, the Flame Guard. Ten seconds. How much do you think LGD are going to be playing into the idea of Primal Beast as a flex? Do, do you think Five they're going to hold it the whole way until the end? Team or like at what point bend. do you feel like the matchups you see are enough information? Like right now I look at the Shadow Demon Lina, I'm like, I'm pretty happy as Primal Beast for now as a core. Um, SG, do you think there's any concerns yet? Because usually you don't start with two cores, right? If you're locking it in like that. Yeah, I guess they're very confident in their Ember, and it is good against these two heroes. He's gonna have a, a free lane against the Lina for the most part, if he plays it well. But with the flexing of the Primal, they don't have last pick, so they'll probably hold it till their 23rd pick. Remaining. Uh, they'll just see if they put it off lane or 4. I'm not sure if they've run it on 4 Five before, but Zin seems like a guy that would enjoy this hero. He played Spirit Breaker earlier today. It's like the same hero, just faster. <laughs> not, not quite. quite global, not though, quite. Right? Yeah. yeah. They're actually very different, but they both charge, so we'll say it's the same here. Well, um, I think Primal Beast doesn't actually Team speak a language Astros to my knowledge. That's also true. Spearbreaker does have actual voice. Do you know who wins the charts, though, if they charge against each other? Uh, ooh, that's a great question. Uh, the Primal wins. He's, really? Uh, yeah. 
Huh. It's because it stumps this guy to the ground. Got bigger AoE, right? Well, his yeah. body is bigger. It makes sense. Yeah, um, physically speaking. Yeah, Dota's known to be really realistic in Absolutely. that way. Absolutely. That's true. Yeah. So we're going to see Silencer being taken out along with the Brew Five and Lifestealer. Lifestealer kind of this hero that has had a bit of a resurgent, resurgence here at TI. Well, I feel like the most part of the year has been kind of ignored. Do you feel like this is... semi recently. Is this kind of a tell that they want the Primal to be a core? I'm assuming this is one of the better matchups against Primal. You have Rage against Trample. Uh, Primal generally gets very tanky, so Feast becomes valuable later on. And I, I wouldn't say Lifesteal is a particularly good hero against Ember, right? So it does seem like they're maybe trying to set up for that, or that Lifestealer maybe counters something that LGD are planning for second phase. Yeah, it does look like they're banning for it to be offline right now. They could just still keep it open, but... There are not that many post fours they would probably want against this SD Lina combination. So it would make sense if they just pick some some hero like a Tusk in the second phase and they don't want to leave it till last when most of these heroes will be banned. Speaking of fours, there's a couple of really popular heroes that have been totally ignored here. Both Nyx and Marcy getting no love. Oh, uh, Marcy fully ignored. Marcy has been oh. first phase picked or banned in most games we've seen. Uh, and it was interesting to see Aster opt for the Shadow Demon Lima, Lina combination because I feel like when I think of Boboca, I think of a roaming player, right? That sets up plays and is super effective. He's very known for his four Ricky when that was a thing, Earth Spirit. Um, should Marcy should be perfect for this player, like as a as a stereotype, right? So the fact that they're not doing that into Primal, maybe they think it's a bad matchup. Yeah, they got the chance to still pick it up here with a bad. No, they could. Now Morphling Ench, the last two bands with the second phase. Uh, for Aster and PSG, Mars for uh, PSG LGD. We're going to see Marat. So, more setup for the Shadow Demon. Interesting. So, you got the arrow, you got the LSA, you got. doesn't matter what lane they go to, as long as Shadow Demon is there, they can set that up. Something I feel like I've been noticing over the last, I want to say, two days, is I think teams are learning quite a lot from especially Tundra, uh, I would say. Uh, Tundra has been playing these lineups that have a lot of skirmishing potential with like two, three hero combinations that just have stuns, have burst, and also have the scaling. Uh, Tundra was one of the only teams to play Chaos Knight, for example, as a carry, because they just seem to utilize it so well to enable their other players by having him on that carry hero. And when I look at this Astra lineup, it kind of reminds me of something that I feel like I would see Tundra pick if their next like, let's say their safe lane carry now also has a stun. There's just so many ways that SD, Marana, and Lina can find moments PSG, around the map, as long as you don't compromise on team fight too much. Yeah, these heroes are, are all very good as well against the Primal. I think at this point you might want to think about putting it on four, because it's going to be quite hard in these lanes to get on top of anything. Visage, okay. It looks like they will lay in the Visage of the Primal. Well, when you guys were drafting, I mean, Cinder brought this up earlier, but you had the Primal Beast hard countered, and it was an early Primal Beast, and you still played it as position three. What was the thought process going into that? Did you just Ten feel comfortable doing it, or... Because when we looked at it, we were like, wow, this Primal Beast is going to have a really hard time, and Five he did it initially, and then he literally took over the game, it felt like. Yeah, I don't remember exactly what we were thinking. I think the, the main thing of this hero is he's always going to have a pretty decent lane, even if you try to counter him, if he's not countered into the lane. And... Yeah, I'm not sure actually. That's uh, that's the interesting part where I don't do the draft and my coach does it. I was just chilling a bit, <laughs> waiting to see what happens. And then, oh, uh, it's offline. Okay. okay, good to know. There we go. The inside dynamic there for gaming PSG gladiators. So we are going to see the Pango come out, and Aster will save their carry pick for last. This is usually, if you feel like at this point when you see Visage, Disruptor, and Primal, that you can kind of lock in what type of lane at least LGD are playing in the offlane, which we both think it's going to be Visage Primal, depending on who gets the farm priority. We don't know Ten that yet. Uh, this did feel like a spot that you could have picked your carry in, so why do you think they opt for Pango first? Yeah, that's a good question. I guess they're very confident on this PSG offline Pango, and they feel like it's going to get banned if they don't pick it up now. And it is a pretty good Pango game. If it gets going, if he has a good start, maybe you can even go for a bit more core build with the Diffuse instead of the Flats on offline. Very quick bans here in yeah. LGD. They knew exactly what they wanted I mean, to get Keep in mind, of. these two teams have played a lot against each other yeah. throughout the year. Maybe not that much recently, but uh, I'm sure they have tons of scrims as well behind the scenes. And I wonder who that's actually going to benefit, really. Because LGD, obviously, the team that has more success on an international stage. Yeah, I think a lot of the time the, the intra-regional experience kind of fades in comparison to the meta of the tournament itself. I think most of the time it's about who adapts better to what proves to be powerful in the events that you're at. 
Um, so I personally don't put very much stock in, let's, let's say Aster had an insane win rate against LGD Online for the rest of the year. I don't think it's that important. What's important is how these teams have looked in their last few series, how they've adapted to what other teams are throwing at them. Um, and I, when I look at this Aster draft, I don't see Aster picking specifically Whoa. something against you LGD, right? They're just... Mentioned this hero. Yeah, now that My goodness. is not something I would have expected. <laughs> uh, what, uh, okay. what position is this Ricky? Uh, it should just be carry. Right? Probably carry. I think so we're not going to see the weird uh, like shard into whatever the hell he do on this hero. I mean, you might buy it later. It is, it is a pretty cool Ricky game if he gets on top of any wow. of these backliners. Smokescreen is pretty damn good this game, no doubt, especially against Pango, which means you're going to need to buy four staffs, which you wouldn't want to do normally. Wow. In the past, we've sometimes seen teams pivot from mid-ember and putting it safe lane, but I don't think I've seen that a single time this tournament. Um, Usually it was paired with Magnus when you did that because you could compensate for Ember's lower levels by giving him Empower. Do you think there's like any world that this Ricky is not safe lane and Ami's playing Ember? There's not, right? Like it has to be Ami on the Ricky. There's definitely a world, but not this world. Because <laughs> that gives Aster quite a bit of information for this last pick, right? And they're going to opt for a Drow. This is a hero that Ricky can relatively easily get on top of, actually. I think, um, I think it might be a really rough lane for this Drow and SD, I imagine they're paired with. Primal and Visage. I think they might might destroy this lane. It's a form primal on Jinkyu, so they will give the farm priority to the Visage. I'm excited to see some Ricky. Um, yeah, I mean, me too. This hero is super hit or miss, in my opinion. I don't think I ever see a game where I'm like, oh, this Ricky did okay. Like, he either sucked or he <laughs> crushed, you know? Yeah. It's a very, very polarizing hero, especially on a professional level. Uh, because he can fall off really, really hard. It's either going to catch on and more teams are going to pick it or it will literally never be picked <laughs> the rest of the game game we see in the main yeah. event, yeah. yeah. Is yeah. this the first Ricky game of the main event? I think it is. I mean, surely. I'm pretty sure it has been picked in groups, but I want to say it's been less than five total games. So. Oh, you probably just didn't see it. Oh. Well, Celery, appreciate you coming on. <laughs> <laughs> Making fun of Cinderin as always. We really appreciate that. Uh, and have the rest of the day off, my friend. <laughs> Thank you very go much. over to Mr. Sir Action Slack, so I believe it's with Lan M. We have, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Big Draft Lanham. How you doing? And Jen, our translator right there. So, you've uh, let through Primal Beast, something that many are not brave enough to do. Uh, are you ex was that part of your plan? Did you expect them to grab that uh, instantly? First uh, BP大神 然后这个兽也是本届TI一个很兽，就是每个人都想要的一个英雄，已经很少有战队敢把放出来了。你这边这么呃这么采取这样的一个BP的行动，是专门有计划来针对他了吗？还是怎么说？呃，肯定是想好
And I also gotta say, I'm a bit surprised to see Ami be gold tier on it. He passes the Amar test just barely here by being gold tier, Ricky. So, has the permission to play it. I mean, he um, doesn't want to get reported. It's understandable. Yeah. Don't want to have the low priority experience. So, usually the build on this here, if you want to cover it a little bit, because we can talk about whether that's going to work in this game or not. Most Rikis, when they played as carry, will go for a Diffusal Blade into either Manta or BKB. And then you can consider two paths with either Basher or Axe, where you play around teammates, or you can try to go something like Scotty and really make yourself very strong with a Manta. Uh, in this game, I yeah, feel yeah. like the primary purpose of LGD picking this hero and what they're aiming for is to have a carry that just breaks up the fight and makes the supports uncomfortable, right? Mm -hmm. I think his goal is to get on the Shadow Demon, it's to get on this Mirana and just kill them, force them to buy four staffs, uh, and then in case they get four staffed away, they have a glimpse to bring them back. Ricky is going to give that vision for why to, to really get a lot of value out of Disruptor. So, yeah, very interesting stuff. Uh, and. Most of the times, Ame has been, you know, hard carrying with someone. Sven <laughs> earlier today, we've seen him on heroes like Terrorblade, Morphling, this kind of stuff. Ricky is different. I don't, I don't think, I mean, is he going to just go battle for it far? Uh, <laughs> I would love to see that, actually. He <laughs> has, has a Ring of Health queued up. I'm just saying, like, if I he mean, actually commits to this build, he the might. The build for a while, I mean, I don't know how long ago this was, but it was the, what, Battle Fury into Ags, right? Uh, uh, yeah, like maybe third item Ags. Yeah, I think so. Uh, but since they, cha again, this is kind of old changes, but we haven't seen Ricky, haven't really gotten to talk about it, but Diffusal not that long ago, maybe a year ago, they made it a lot cheaper. Yep. A lot of people thought that Ricky would be a little bit more popular, which I think he was initially, but has completely dropped off him. We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna see this game, if it was a good pick or not. But I mean, in theory, like we talked about, Smokescreen this game is very good. Is Drow good. is obviously gonna itemize with like a Hurricane Pike or whatever, but Pango, I've, XXS is gonna have a lot of trouble, uh, I feel like, against this hero, but we'll see. The battle XXS begins. eyeing up the rune. He sees another hero, and then he's not eyeing it up anymore. So two for two trade, pretty standard. Both teams are covering their respective safe lane halves of bounty runes. And yeah, let's have a look at what Ricky's facing, because this hero, as we talked about, has very polarizing performances. This time around, going to be playing against Pango Mirana. So not a very traditional Mirana pairing, right? You don't have any sort of reliable setup to hit the arrow, so Bobaka has to more or less do it on his own. If he wants to gank mid, there isn't something like Astral to set him up from an OD, which would be classic. It's Lina, so both heroes kind of want the setup. Uh, so I think Bobaka has to do a really good job here to find major impact on the Mirana early on. Mid lane, Ember against Lina, covered that with Celery, says Ember should be just fine here farming. And then in the top lane, Visage and Primal Beast. Uh, Celery thought that Primal Visage was going to take over this lane. So with that in mind, maybe Aster, a little bit worrisome how the lanes have been set. Yep, only time will tell. And like you said, Ori playing in the mid lane as Lina versus the Ember Spirit. Usually that is ends up being kind of a wash to some degree. Uh, but there, I mean, what kind of gank potential do each side have? Because I, obviously I mentioned Ad Nauseam uh, with Siamese Cat playing the Shadow Demon. A lot of the setup that he has available to him if he was able to roam, but he's going to be stuck in his safe lane for quite a while. As he's going to get jumped on by Jin Q. I was trying to get the range creep secure there, but it did get denied by Mane before he got there. So a lot of damage, though. A bit of damage. Yeah, don't underestimate Onslaught as a level one spell. It's 110 physical damage and obviously positions you right on top of the hero, so packs quite the punch. These heroes in the dire safe lane, both three armor only. And the glimpse back on Good damage. Fest, but why? He's the one taking the brunt of the damage right now. Yes. Swashbuckle blocks him as well. And why? He does use his health salve and lives, but it gets instantly canceled. So a lot of economic damage here on the side of Aster. I think what Bobaka should do now is go courier hunting. Ricky and Disruptor have zero tangos left. So if this courier delivery fails, I think they can start winning the lane on harassment. Hmm. Um, XXS on that tango will be able to sustain quite a lot longer with tango plus salve against these heroes and the stick that he's going to get charges on every time there's a blink strike, every time there's tricks, every time there's thunder strike. Very great stick lane here. Uh, both of them obviously running that immediately on these heroes. Um, Disruptor currently ferrying out two mangoes, so they're not even sending down a tango pack. Just I mean, we yet. should also mention, since we don't see a whole lot of Ricky, but his base regen is kind of crazy. I think, yeah. is it five? Oh, it's eight right now. He's, he has a flag bearer. The, that's what the tower, yeah. Okay. No, no. So when the flag bearer dies, we're down to six. Now the extra one from the, so it's five, five base. Six is still really high, really, really high, and he has high armor as well, so. 
This lane is predominantly going to be in the uh, in their tower, I think. So I believe Ame will be sitting on the sixth region most of the time. But now Bobaka has opened up the big camp. Onslaught onto Siamese Cat here on the Shadow Demon. As Jin Q using the new set for Primal Beast. It's a lot of armor. You would think that would add a little bit of extra damage to his onslaught, but he doesn't need it. He's first banned most games. <laughs> so. But Monet off to a pretty good start, 15 and 6 in the CS, and you can see in the mid lane, 17 and 3 uh, for the Lina on Ori. As nothing to say, pretty close uh, with 15 to 2, so kind of what we expected, a wash overall. But back to the original conversation with how much roaming potential each side has uh, in terms of the ganking is why Swashbuckle, and that end, ends up being first blood, going the way of XXS. Yeah. Ame still very healthy, though. This is what ends up happening when you don't have Tangos for a minute and a half. Like, eventually yeah. they're going to waddle you down so much that you're in killing range, and Ricky doesn't offer much in the way of defense for his support. He can't really cover or anything, so... Yeah, good start there for Aster. Going to be very happy for them to get that on XXS. He's also going to get himself a nice little Black Bear creep there. Um, up thing to currently eye up... Wait, what is he buying with this? LSA connects, but limps back. Ori taking a lot of damage. TP is coming in from Baboka, but the last right click is enough from Y. So big kill for LGD here in the mid lane. Yep. Great way of taking advantage of dying there. <laughs> it gets the full refill and comes straight mid and finds a play. So good read from Y that that is a possibility. Punishing Ori uh, in that lane. Looks like Pango's going Vanguard, by the way, to answer that my own question from earlier. Uh, good item against the Visage, obviously. Uh, pretty decent against Ricky as well. wonder if we're going to see him build the full Crimson. Yeah, possibility. Um, Not the most risk. common items these days. It is nice for... I think the logic of buying items on Pango that protect Drow is pretty sound in this game. I think uh, for Aster to find success in the later portions, this Drow has to have some sort of freedom to stand her ground and not just get run over by Ricky, by Primal Beast, by Ember. Onslaught in with the Trample. A lot of damage coming out onto Siamese Cat. Monet can't really do much, as that's going to lead to another kill on the Shadow Demon. Oh, Jin Q now getting kited as Monet. Does he have actually enough damage here as a pause comes out? All right, what the horse happens now, Cinderin? <laughs> do they get the kill on this Primal Beast? So Monet does not have multi shot. Jin Q does not have any stick. So yeah, Jin Q's dead. Okay. There is two visage illusions I didn't, I didn't, hitting him. Technically, as well. I didn't give you any options. I said if he would die or not. Okay, so. is there another one? Uh, server crashes. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I think that's the lower yeah. chance one. <laughs> yeah, I think that one's a hail mary for Jin Q here. Yep. Uh, but they've killed the shadow demon now. Uh, oh, actually, it's only the first death uh, for Siamese Cat. Actually. Yeah, I think overall, if you get this trade as Aster, you're very happy. I, I think this is a lane that's very scary. The visage uh, primal beast and trading support for support for them should be just fine. Especially with Mane getting the kill. So Jinq was the one who got the kill before. And arguably PSG could have maybe got this kill without dying. Okay, not Jinkyu to interrupt. Dove. I'm so sorry to interrupt you. Sir. Okay, you're not. Well, okay, we're going to restart this thing. It's been a while since we've done this. What the horse happens here? Okay. Jinq lives, okay. Jinq dies to Mone, or Jinq dies to Siamese Cat. Oh, shadow that's now. true. The Shadow Poison and two Visage Illusions. That's right, sure. He dies to Mane, though. He dies to Mone. Okay. Yeah. Right, One more yeah. hit, the Visage yeah, Illusions yeah. are going to attack as well. All right. Okay, Maybe yeah, that's yeah. what they're discussing as well. <laughs> so, uh, Who's yeah. getting the kill? Yeah. Okay, Very yeah. important, of course. Uh, I mean, obviously, they would like it to go to Monet. Yeah. Uh, but in terms of a Drow game overall, how does this feel uh, for Aster? I mean, they, they've, mid to late game? they've got to be confident, right? They last picked it. They saw everything here. Um, and I, I guess the... The good news for Drow is, first of all, she's empowering her own Lina, right? Which is very... It's going to make Ori's game a lot stronger if he goes some sort of physical build instead of the build that we've also seen with the Ags burst. I think he should go a physical route probably with Drow. Um, you have the Pango for the front line, and you do have SD for the defense. So I think it's a solid Drow game, but it's also dangerous. It's one of those situations <laughs> where <laughs> if you get the right positioning, yeah. You're playing against Ricky, Primal Beast, and Ember, and they've used their mobility. You just crush them from range. But if they manage to get on top of you and say Shadow Demon is dead, you're kind of fighting for your life from the beginning of the fight. So um, I think it's... Okay, well, with that in mind, since we're talking about the very situational. For, for Ame on Ricky, he already did get the Ring of Health that you were talking about. Yep. Will he actually turn this into a battle for you? Or is that too greedy? 
I, mean, I don't know. Diff again, Diffusal is a lot cheaper than in years past when Ricky was a little bit more popular. I mean, let's look at it from the perspective of why else would you buy a Ring of Health? Right. To live. Uh, he already has really good base HP region. He has good armor, and he's playing against a lane that's not that strong. So I don't know if he needs the ring for sustain, just for yeah. sustenance in the lane. I. Oh, I'm hold on, hold on. Fear vibes. He will. Oh. Die to Siamese kiss. See, so wow. here's the thing. He what? got this. He got the <laughs> passive block there. Oh um, wow. Yep, that's a that's a factor we didn't consider. Willie, he was going to block some crowd. When you say we, you mean you. You yeah, did not. You did not consider that. it either. Faith Beyond getting kited a bit more now by Monet. Good damage. He might actually kill him here. Yeah, he could. Multi shot is there, and that's going to be enough. TP is coming in now. That's what you asked, Jin right? Jin Q onslaught. Oh, gets gusted. Immediate cancellation. That would have been option D. Uh, they killed both of them and they split it. Radiance All right, so fits. every prediction we had was actually wrong. <laughs> that is correct. It's not even all right. He's going to get glimpsed back, but oh, nice disruption, disruption on the chain. Searing chains. Not available here, but Ori will drop nonetheless. Yeah. There's nothing to say with the sleight of fist. Oh, and he's even going to get a regen rune here for his troubles. Just needs to wait until the Shadow Poison runs out. They can pop it. They could dive here. I think, did ST see this rune be picked up by the. He did have a ward on it, so. Pichu yeah, should be too has surprised. made the trip over as well, and he's hungry for some Shadow Demon. Disruption on himself, but this is going to just delay the inevitable here as another kill goes the way of PSG LGD. Ori does connect on the LSA. Baboka's here as well, but they don't have enough lockdown. No arrow As already. Ori was not, he's not quite level 6, so Radiance no Laguna Blade has been yep. killed. would have been enough. Important for LGD to be winning this mid lane because this top, I, I think this top lane went better for Aster than you could have hoped for. Monet being level 6 now against level 4 Visage. Uh, close to level 5 at the very least for Faith Beyond, but let's say a full level advantage. I don't know if this kill... Okay, with Primal, it's definitely going to be possible. Yeah, they're getting a great angle here on Monet. Monet inside the kinetic field. All he can do is pop that multi-shot, and it looks like... Oh, okay. Just it away, but back with the glimpse, and Monet falls to the ground as PSG LGD get another valuable kill. Yeah, that's... That's what happens when Shadow Demon has already rotated mid. He's not there for the immediate cover, and they grab that nice kill. I, I wonder if Monet is even going to go back to top lane now. He might just go jungle. He's level 6, has Treads, Wraith Band. He farms pretty quickly in that jungle, and you give the top lane to another hero and just accept that once in a while there's going to be a, some sort of dinosaur bus just driving by and killing your SD, and it's like, oh, well, whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. um, he'll go bottom at... at for now, with a dust, so okay. looking to gank on his Drow Minute 7, wow. a classic play we see all the time. <laughs> yep, that is uh, very interesting, his Ame, we can see, is just going to have to watch that Tier 1 tower fall. It's such an early tower, they didn't have a Siege Creep remaining either, there's just no resources for LGD to hold on to this. Yep, we got the Searing Chains, or he's in a lot of trouble, and there's the Trample Onslaught combo as Jin Q able to help finish off the Lina, Laguna Blade was used, but not to much avail. So PSG LGD kind of all over the map. They they do lose their tier one tower at the bot lane though. So far their gank timings have been pretty pristine, right? Not only have they been successful in killing Ori three times, but it's all two or three, two out of three kills I believe have been exactly around the power rune timing. So nothing to say. He got the six minute region after the first kill or the second kill, and now he got the illusion rune top after the third kill, minute eight. So very, very good rotation, especially from Jin here on that primal. And Faith Beyond, because of the kill they found top beforehand, is level 6. So you can kind of leave him alone here. There's uh, not many heroes that want to stand against Visage in the dire team. Shadow Demon doesn't enjoy it. Mirana doesn't enjoy it. Pango can. Um, that might be what they're opting for once he gets the Vanguard. Maybe you just park XXS to try to defend that tower for as long as possible. And nothing to say. Going to the high ground here on the Aster's side. He's going to find him... A couple other heroes here from Aster, but the LSA is not going to be able to hit, so he just walks away casually. Oh, a little bit of miscommunication there, missing the swash. Disruption, but the slide of fist to buy some time, and the remnant away, nothing to say is A-OK. -okay. And that bought the space for Faith Beyond to take the Tier 1 tower. It was a slow one, but essentially soloed it. All right. He said the Vanguard now online is Monet. He's going to get gone on here with the tricks of the trade from Ame. Kinetic Field's gonna keep him in place. All he can really do is multi-shot, but gets the gust off. They have a little bit of vision, but ends he up going away. So we're gonna see a Laguna Blade used in the, mi in the middle of the jungle here. That'll lead to a kill onto Jin Q. 
Nice escape there from Moni. He needs to be caught. Uh, he needs to be patient there with the gust. Just uh, chill, get away. And it'll TP in with a bit of a helping salve here from Pichu. Uh, we have an answer, by the way, of Rick what Ricky is going to use the Ring of Health for. What do you think it is? Nothing. That is correct. He's buying Diffusal. <laughs> I mean, You're right. is there Just any the reason to go Link in this game? Not really. I mean, ultimately, you will turn this Ring of Health into an Abyssal, right? But it's quite... Okay, <laughs> like super late game. <laughs> it's uh, it's quite far away. I, I have to say, I, I love this hero. I've played it quite a bit, but almost exclusively as support. I cannot explain to you why this Ring of Health is that valuable that you must buy it. Maybe there's some sort of logic to how you're able to farm when you're not laning, like if you can sustain better in the jungle, or or maybe he just had a different read on the lane, that he needed it. I think now that we've seen the lane play out, it didn't really feel necessary. I don't know. Yeah, that is true. We can see the jump here onto Siamese Cat. Instant disruption as Jin Q looking on the sideline for the bigger kill on Monet. Pulverize is there. They're going to be able to get the support right off the bat. The trample comes in. I think the gust actually missed here from Monet. Oh. He's going to get glimpsed back. And that is going to lead to a very valuable kill, although it goes to Y. Either way, PSG LGD going to be very happy with this. Yeah, they're going to... Still have their static storm intact and pulverize obviously a super short cooldown. So this support duo now of PSG LGD has insane playmaking potential. Static storm 90 second cooldown, pulverize a measly 32. So a lot of opportunities to just go around, look for picks. Uh, as we've already established, they're very good at killing the enemy supports, but it, also the Lina. I think they would love to find Ori once more. Uh, and as long as they're playing together with nothing to say, I don't think there's any limitations for finding kills. The, the defensive possibilities that Aster have through the means of Moonlight Shadow, you just cover that with the dust, and the Shadow Demon Disruption, most of the time, will just set up a static storm, right? So you, you've got to be really, really careful as Aster now with how you play the map. Every time these heroes are missing, it's kind of a minefield. XXS still in the mid lane right now, just chilling, has his Vanguard, and will be going for instantly, pretty much, the Crimson Guard, Cinderin. Yep. Again, not the most popular item these days, but against the Visage makes a lot of sense. The prize is mine. And I mean, they have a lot of damage on this team, so maybe he doesn't really need to go uh, what you would usually see on the Pangoliers these days. And the thing you could argue is that is Crimson Guard actually a better defensive item for his team than if he goes Force Lotus, for example, right? So you have multiple ways of repositioning away from Ricky, of getting out of Searing Chains on the Ember, because if he's itemizing this way for his Drow's sake, I. I don't think most players would buy the Crimson here in this tournament. Uh, so either it's because Aster have an idea of a specific timing with this item that they're going to try to force a good fight once it's online around Roche or around the mid tower, for example, to, to try to get some gain some ground. Um, or he feels like if he doesn't buy it, the Visage Birds are just too big of a problem. Another pause here, but in terms of the the flow of the game, would you say that you would favor one team at this stage? I, I do like the look of this currently for LGD. Um, Shocker. Uh, well, first of all, they're, they have a slight gold lead. And oh, I, yes, of course. I don't think the... I, I think this Ricky got off to a very good start, and as we've talked about, pretty polarizing hero. But with the start oh, that he had... Oh, man, Laguna okay. Blade to follow, but... No backup. The trade, yeah, the Moonlight Shadow giving cover for Ori, but allows him to initiate, but... Nobody to follow it up with as Y taking a lot of damage in the meantime with the multi shot is finishing up from the high ground is oh, there's the first rolling position. thunder of the game from XXX. Oh. But nothing to say with the remnant in a way. Now Monet has to be careful as there are familiars just completely surrounding him. Soul Assumption is there as well. And the last right click will do it. Now the pulverize applied to XXS. All he can do actually mitigates a lot of damage to that shield crash, but doesn't last as long as it used to. Not able to get the start of the faith beyond, but the Searing Chains is there. So three kills for PSG LGD. We, we're, we're talking a tenth of a second there from a totally different outcome, I think. Nothing to say, just barely gets off the activate fire remnant. <laughs> this is just a typical Ricky in pubs, man. <laughs> just hanging around, stealing some creeps here and there. Yeah, I wonder if we're going to get a replay on that, because I, I thought Aster in the position that they were in were actually going to win that fight when I saw the primal uh, or the pango roll come out. So look here where Ember ends up getting positioned now once the pango comes out. So this is where pango can usually find a perma chain stun, right? Oh, yeah, close. If that connects, I think they might take down nothing to say. And obviously the remainder of the fight plays out completely differently. He's integral in every single kill they get afterwards. So imagine the Ember dying there. Maybe Aster take a, a pretty meaningful win. Instead, they lose three, and 
As you said, Ricky not involved in the mix. He's going to get a Diffusal Blade now, and Visage gets the Wraith Pack as well. So huge power spike now very big. for LGD's lineup. And they will Everyone's look to take full mid. advantage. Will be taken out. Yep. Dyer's uh, just curious what the build Ame is going for. So obviously maxing Blink Strike and then Tricks of the Trade. So only one in smoke screen yeah. uh, for the moment. But Very standard. Uh, the AoE, is it still increased with each one? No. Okay. No. Well, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah. You have a talent on 10 where you can take either that or the Blink Strike slow. Uh, uh, I wonder what he's going to do here because you can choose to go for a talent now. You could start putting more points into smoke screen. I, if I were to guess, he probably takes the Blink Strike slow so he can stay on top of the draw more easily. Uh, but there is something good to be said. I mean, the smoke screen AoE talent is, is also pretty strong. Okay, he's going to get glimpsed back. He is Moonlight Shadowed, but they have the vision and they have the kill again as PSG LGD. Looking extremely good at the moment. Slide of Fist is going to connect onto two as the Moonlight Shadow is about to Screw. end here. I, Jin Q just posturing at the high ground. I'm looking at the game state right now and Aster initiating into LGD's team, and I just find it so hard to find the path. They're going to oh, try the here. Perks to start, but an instant static storm onto XXS, but is it going to be follow up? Not really. It delays and perhaps just ends this engagement entirely. The thing that's so tough is that. If you don't have superior vision as the Dire, you're running in against Slight Chains out of Fog, Glimpse, Ricky, who could be anywhere if he's not showing farming the top wave as he is right now, and a Primal Beast from Fog too. There's just so many uncertainties, and your heroes aren't naturally tanky. Your only real frontliner is the Pango with the Crimson Guard. If Lina gets caught, she's kind of toast. If Draw gets ca caught, she also still doesn't have that pike. Well, thankfully for Aster, they made that change. The Primal Beast, when he uses Onslaught, you can hear it yep. at the very least, the sound cue. Uh, but yeah, very, very scary to walk into this team for sure. They will access their own jungle again, which is good news for Aster. They need some a bit more area to work with. Uh, also, Ori is going to complete the BKB in 100 gold, so maybe that's going to open things up a little bit more for them. I mean, talk to me again, back to the Ricky, as, mm -hmm. as you know I'm going to go here again. Yeah. With a typical carry that we've been seeing a lot from, from PSG LGD, if you're up 5k at this stage, is that like extremely good news as a Ricky? Because he hasn't been involved at all. So I feel like this is just going to get amplified now as he starts to actually show up in these fights. The Siamese Cat looks like he's got the self-disrupt. Good arrow. Sassy wants to go for the roll. Faking it out here a bit. is nothing to say. Does finish off Siamese Cat with that last slight Comfy fist, but the way he goes is PSG LGD. Oh, they Very got the confident. Big glimpse into the Static Storm and Pulverize. No chance for XXS as he does not have his shard. Obviously, that is going to be the big counter to that. Dyer's bottom tower and we'll see if uh, PSG LGD wants to try to go for the old Roche. That's a good point. I actually think Pango should be buying the shard now. It's it's really, really valuable. But to answer your question from before, uh, being 5k gold ahead is indeed good, yes. Okay. Um, uh, that's yeah. it's double checking. Being 5k gold up at 15 minutes is good. And if Ricky was another carry, it would also be good <laughs> because he's ahead by 5k. So yes, that is correct. Well, it's a carry that hasn't done anything yet, really. Yeah, if oh, another boy. carry also had done anything, being 5k <laughs> up would be pretty good. All right, I see your point. Thank you, uh, Cinder. You're welcome. It was right a great here. question. <laughs> Always here to help. As we're going to see a big smoke now from PSG LGD, Roche is at a half HP right now. They don't want to fight it. Or they don't want to take it out quite yet because everybody from Aster is up here on the high ground. But they're going to try to pounce onto Ori. He's going to run right into the familiars, but they're going to go for the D Wards first instead. But there's the glimpse back. Instant stun. Here comes the rolling thunder from XXS. He's not really going to connect initially. He's nothing to say. Comes up with a big slight and the BKB proc. But Ori, he's going to return the favor with the BKB of his own. Kind of a weird engagement here as the XXS now. They have glimpse again in two. The other side. But no deaths out of that fight. That was a very a very clever way that PSG en engaged that and also a good response from Aster. So what LGD realized is the one thing they need to not happen is that they get clumped up and get pango rolled and then the artillery just starts going to town with the drow as well as Lina. So what they do is they poke and force out the pango roll and then they just disengage. And oh, now that it's on cooldown, chance, no they can BKB go. Or a soul assumption is there, smoke screen as well, he's done. Monet gets a pretty good multi-shot, but this is going the way of PSG LGD for sure. Two for nothing to start it. 
nothing to say. He's not done here quite yet. Gets the Searing Chains off, but the disruption's gonna delay this just for a little bit. Space Beyond continuing with his familiars, but Monet just ticking down ever so slowly. Another gosh, but there's the Blink Strike from Ame. Double kill for him. Tricks of the trade, but Blink Strike back into the fray, and that's a fourth kill going the way of LGD, and this should be a free Roche as well. Ricky is owning. <laughs> yeah. He got his defusal, he came online, and he's day. joining. And Dying yeah, I mean, you're count. starting to see part of the reason, or maybe the whole reason, that Ricky was the choice here for LGD among a plethora of options that would have worked against this dire lineup. They went for this one. And he's just, he's hounding those supports, and he's hounding that Lina. So again, with that fight we just had, we got, as we see the replay here, that what ha what led to this is effectively Tango rolls on cooldown from the poke that LGD did at the outpost, and so is Lina's BKB. So you're well, I think Aster making a pretty crucial mistake here, even being positioned in that spot. I, I think they have no business trying to to even look for a fight. Yeah. Uh, the the, the Pangoro is just too big a part of their lineup. When that's on cooldown, you got to play way more defensively than that. His hand is kind of forced when Ori gets caught. They're trying to help, but the help the friend syndrome effectively there just gets four heroes killed instead of one. Yeah, and by the way, uh, for the Ring of Health uh, watchers out there, it is now in Ame's backpack, so very valuable spot right now. Yeah. A little passive zero regen at the moment. Uh, he's banking on uh, a little bit of an macroeconomic change here. Gold goes up in value, and then I mean, it is a gold ring, right? I think so. Well, let's call it. It looks gold. Yeah, it's gold. So maybe it will increase in price. What do you think about that as a concept? What if items sold for more and more gold the later the game went? That sounds really terrible. Then you can just replace your items. Yeah, completely. that's a really awful idea. Thank you, Sir Action Slacks, for that. <laughs> Goes right in the bag with Lycan Axe. Now, Lycan Axe is cool. That was his, I mean... Radiance Middle Tower. A broken tower. clock is right twice a day. That's what I think of Slacks in general. So. I kind of like that. Whenever I have a really stupid idea, I'll just say it was Slacks, <laughs> and everyone will believe me, I think. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's fake news right there. Gonna, for Fortification pop by Aster as they are at a 7k network, make it 8, deficit at only 21 minutes. This is yeah. turning into a shellacking for sure. And the thing is, it's it's not Radiant only about the gold, it's about the flow of the map, right? Like, you can be 8k gold behind, but maybe still have some sort of a, a meaningful direction you can find in the game. It's just oh, terrifying. I mean, look at nothing to say. XXS, he's trying to get up. His Rolling Thunder, he does. Nice if he there. just attempts to TP away, I doubt they will try to fight this. Well, Jin Q takes a demonic purge. Siamese Cat's dead. Yeah, this tower's lost now because you don't have Pango. So, and another instance where it feels like Aster would have been wiser to not even bother uh, to be here. I just think these fights are too difficult, and they end up just feeding over a, a key cooldown here in the Pango, as well as their Shadow Demon's life for to no avail, really. As PSG LGD wanted to be there with their heroes anyway, so it's not like you you didn't get any meaningful Radiant trade, like damage on a tower or a power rune or anything of that kind. The invis rune still sitting bottom and gonna see who's gonna grab this. It is an interesting rune to take on, not Ricky, Shannon. Uh, you could take it but on the Primal voice line is so rare. That's true. It is okay. a good voice line. Gonna walk away here. Onslaught. Oh, he does see him, but gets gusted. But the glimpse back, that was just enough into the Static Storm. Trample as well, but Ori pops the BKB, gets the LSA to be able to cancel it. They do get the kill onto the Primal Beast, but there's a disruption to save Monet, but not for long enough. Down goes the Drow again. The Monarch Parts on the Nothing to Say, and his Remnant's gonna be really slow as a result, but he has the cover of his teammates. Shadow Demon dead. Ori basically out of mana, and that means they can now initiate, but the Moonlight Shadow giving him cover. It's running Rolling out now. from XXS. Nice blink onto two heroes. Here comes a nice Star Storm as well. Nothing to say. Gets stunned again. Do they have enough? They do. Big kill for Aster. Need to get more out of this, though. Swashbuck on to Y, but now they're going to control XXS as he is in within arm's reach of the Ricky and the smoke screen. And down he goes. So it ends up being a four for two. And the Aegis still intact. And in the meantime, off to the side, Ame did kill off Ori in the trees. Ori tried to stick to get the mana for a stun, but immediately got smokescreen defusal burned. There was just no way out of that. So another... It's kind of interesting that LGD's gold lead is barely growing from that fight, but I guess the Ember kill was just worth that much. He was 6-0 and after all. Um, maybe there, if Mane pikes the... Uh, the Primal Beast, instead of forcing himself, perhaps this goes a little bit better. And I think he could have maybe killed the Primal from behind the tower before he got glimpsed. And Lina doesn't have to expend spells on this, but it's so easy to say, like, 
You're obviously going to go off a gut reaction there on what you can do. Oh, we got the trample out of Invis from Jin Q, but Hurricane Pike back into the glimpse and the static storm as well, but I don't think nothing to say can go any further as the pressure is being applied onto Y. Zach Pekas wants to finish him off and they will be able to do so. Nothing to say has to pop the BKB now in retreat. By the way, I wanted to talk about Jin Q's build. He's going for Halberd on Primal Beast, which, yep. I mean, normally we would see BKB. Is this a little that doesn't feel like he needs it? Or is this because they feel like they're really Radiant's far ahead right now? Tower is under attack. Yeah, I, I kind of agree that BKB looks very strong because um, you do have some quite limited freedom against a hero like Pango. Uh, maybe part of the logic is Demonic Purge just ruins you after you've gone in. Mm -hmm. So maybe he wants to have that extra utility instead to control the Drow with the Disarm. Um, in a way, may or maybe he just wants to go in and tank, right? If the goal here is that he makes space for his teammates, if you go BKB on Primal, what happens a lot of the time is that the enemy team is not going to go on you because they can't kill you. With this, he has way more EHP because he has the evasion and he has that active disarm that he can maybe force a BKB with, or rather not force a BKB with, but keep himself alive if he charges the Drown, just Halberds her, yeah. or the Lina, and then just soak damage while his team just cleans house. It's a different approach. From, they also I think have almost uh, everyone else would take, but I kind of like it here, actually. Like, even if you BKB pulverize somebody, there's always the disruption the possibility yeah. to save the teammate anyway. So Absolutely. It's an interesting kind of... Uh, I mean, I, we joke all the time about Primal Beast and his build being basically, like, the first two items exactly the same every single game, and BKB is almost always one of them. Yep. Uh, but not to be. He's going to be going Halberd into Shiva, it looks like, to so now have Moonlight Shadow by Aster. It's also worth keeping in mind, you have the luxury of thinking about the game entirely differently when you're a four, right? The BKB is almost always a thing on the three primal because you have a bigger responsibility to deal damage. But Jinku's role in this game is more of a controlling nature than a killing one. So he's just going to charge in, mess up the fight, make space. Oh, LSA connects. Laguna Blade as well. Static Storm just for defensive measure, but it's not enough. Nothing to say is dead. Does have the buyback. Not sure if he wants to use it in this engagement. It looks like they're going to lose their primal beast as well. Okay. Nice setup there by Aster baiting the room. That ward value for them getting that ember kill and the primal beast trying to help out gives them a little bit of a bonus kill and that's also going to be a mid tier one tower. The good news for them is Roche cannot be up yet so LGD will not be losing that but they lose quite a bit of ground. This is the start of a potential comeback for Aster into this game. Do they get a meaningful item out of this? So Lina is going to finish Silver Edge so they have that break now. Monet and BKB the crit. about to come as well. Yeah, Monet BKB. That was a very important moment for Aster because of what it leads to now in terms of just a little bit of downtime and getting these two specific items now. Opens up a possibility for them to maybe make more out of this. The prize is mine. Ami closing in on his BKB. I was wondering if he was going to go for that or something else, but has opted to go that route. This is the kind of game where you could maybe justify not getting that magic immunity, but getting more in the way of like a basher, or um, I don't know if you want to be cute and buy ags on the and jump into ember or something like that. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's pretty good. It, it is pretty good, but I think you need more damage before that becomes yeah, meaningful. Yeah. I think you want the basher first most of the time before you do that, so the is that enough? Of illusion. You don't need like a Daedalus or some hardcore item? Uh, not, I mean, it depends on the target, right? It just, it feels really good because Ember Kill. offers you the immunity the of the BKB, of right? So you don't really need to worry about the protection when you go in. So you Mind Breaker, though, pretty freaking good on Ricky. Yeah. Instant blink strike silence, so you don't have to smoke screen immediately. You have a little bit of extra time. He kills Shadow Demon in a heartbeat, basically. Yeah. He doesn't have a force staff, so if he just jumps in, he's dead. Interesting, by the way, to see that from Aster. Nobody bought one except the Drow. Bought what? The, the force? Yeah. So they, they've only, they're eyeing it up now on the Murana, but he opted to go for the Wraith Pack first, which is understandable. Like that item is, of course, very, very powerful in the in this meta and the way teams are playing. Uh, but Siamese Cat's game is just that bad that he's not even close. He's going He's got the Murana. poor man's four staff, which is the Tumbler's toy, which gets deactivated when you take damage. Yep. Not so helpful, maybe. Thank you. Thank you. Instantly silenced and deleted off the map. Oh, they found the Ame, too. But he pops the BKB. But obviously, for the first BKB, not the type of usage that he would have wanted. What is it with this game and LGD getting BKBs off with like no time before that would connect again? 
Am I am I missing something about that change where you can BKB between angle rolls? Is it just me overhyping something that doesn't exist here? Because uh, you remember that, right? I, I do, and I'm forgetting the details as well. So Rolling Thunder used to be a perma stun if you stayed on top of the targets, right? So the, yes. the internal cooldown was low enough. I think with level 2 Rolling Thunder, the stun is long enough because it scales up and there's no status resistance on the Ricky. So I want to say that Ricky and Ember can get chain stunned by a roll level 2, but... You're the Pango player, so you can definitely tell me. Uh, yeah, moving on. Uh, <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> I, I do think it needs to be level two before it I mean, that was mostly for the chain, uh, for the shard, right? When you're rolling thunder and then you just shard on top of them. Oh, uh, speaking of which. Yeah, that's going to be the deletion of XXS. LGD want to fight immediately. Shadow Demon's going to get... Oh, nice disruption on self, so it's going to cancel the glimpse, but... He still will have to cancel his own life, and this could lead just, to Roche. Aster just got a great comeback, and now they get caught off in the middle on their Pango, and this is just a free Roshan. I don't see what's stopping oh. LGD from doing this. Well, well they're going to deward first. That ward looks pretty juicy. Cover the area. AC on Visage should make this a lot easier, and... You know, whenever Ricky is with any sort of teammates doing the Roche, he's actually not the worst Roche killer in the world, because you get backstab on every attack until Roche randomly decides to target you for some reason. Yeah, it feels fine. like Roche really hates Ricky, so yeah. that's for sure. Just like the shard is going to go on Ricky, so now we'll get right. that sleeping dart. Very, very good shard. Uh, part. I mean, the primary reason that for Ricky was actually even a thing after shards came out, because it used to be a thing before Shard even existed, and then it just faded away from existence for like two yeah, or three the, years. What was the meme build was sleep sleep dart into meteor, meteor hammer, hammer right? yeah. I don't yeah. think we're gonna be seeing that, just going out yeah, of the limb so here. Oh, the Gus coming out. XXS gets the Blink Dagger off. Visage is taking a lot of damage. It's going to be enough to actually get beautiful rolls coming out from XXS. They take him out two for nothing to start this fight. But Ori stuck inside of No Man's Land. He gets brought down to his knees. Buyback coming out of the Disruptor now. But look, the heroes from PSG LGD are very low. They're going to lose the Aegis pretty much right off the bat as well. Now he's surrounded. Pops the BKB. Trying to focus down the Shadow Demon. Disruption comes out. But nope, not going to be enough. Nothing to say with the Slide of Fist. Double kill for Ame. So PSG LGD, I mean, I don't even know who won that fight. There was a buyback coming out. I they really, lose the Aegis. It would have been really bad if they didn't have Aegis. I think given the fact that there was an Aegis on the other team, I think Aster should be happy with this. Radiant's and I, I love the way they executed it. They chain stunned and killed Visage 100 to 0. They recognized that there's no defensive tools to keep him alive for LGD. And he's the aura carrier. They get, a, get the Wraith Pack and the AC out of the fight by killing this guy. So choosing that as your primary target here, very, very good. So look at this. So Pango roll stun is going to turn there with the shard, stun again. Mm. And he's trying now to use the shard on Visage, but does just barely get killed. If that shard goes off and he gets stone farm cast there, I think Aster loses this fight horribly because then the AC is in play. Yeah. And the Vlads while he's uh, immune there. So very, very important that they find that, that finish. Not too shabby. As Ame now working on the Eye of Scotty. Oh, and actually, not that far away. This is a moment that Aster could be looking to do something with. They used Moonlight Shadow and have a bottle DD. Man, there's a lot of invis. There's a Ricky, there's Moonlight Shadow, there's Silver Edge, and yep. I believe Aghanim Scepter soon for Visage. <laughs> Centuries are going to be kind of game winning, I feel like. I wonder if Axe is the right choice on Visage, if that's the best item he can buy here. Um, it does feel like something like Hex could be valuable, or... Like, does he, have an, does he have that much responsibility to do damage here, is my question? Like, when you're offering these two auras to your team already, maybe you can get more in the way of utility or survivability. I guess Axe is like a little bit of survivability, but... I don't know. I'm not sure if Axe is the best purchase. Well, Aster do have their first four staff now, outside of Monet, of course. They don't have Moonlight, so they're, are they going to be spotted here? There's Glimpse. Yeah, the course back, probably. Monet, he's gonna get disrupted, so doesn't need to pop it, but the Marana is gonna die for her sins. Monet pops the BKB inside that static zone, there's nothing to say, he's getting melted inside, gets off the slide of fist and able to remnant away, and now Ame trying to focus on Monet, but has to reset. Buy back coming out of the Shadow Demon, as it looks like Jin Q falls to XXS, and the fight ends up resetting here. 6k lead for PSG LGD. And in terms of the net worth swing, it's kind of even <laughs> because yeah. of the buyback. Astro are doing a great job after being under the amount of pressure we talked about and the type of lineup they're playing into. I think it's very admirable how they've managed to kind of stabilize this game in, 
in a range that seems very winnable. Um, I'm going to point out we were talking about, at least uh, maybe I didn't get to say that, but Ricky was considering a nullifier before, but he changed his mind, so Ami's not going to go for the Eye of Scotty. He's going to have more tank ability. He's going to have that reliable scanning. slow, which nullifier also offers, obviously, to an extent, but he's playing against these BKBs. So opting to get that Scotty so he can, maybe just for the sake of, I just want to stay on Drow. They like, literally just be on top of her, pressure her out of that margin ship. Um, Don't forget uh, the Ring of Health. And he still has the Ring of Health, yes. Oh, he, he, sold he just it. sold it. Okay. It was so, an investment. Well, he bought it and used it, I want to say, for 10 minutes. Is yeah. that an exaggeration? Nope. That's about right. That. <laughs> it's... Maybe we can get a little timer next time uh, we see the Ricky pick. And... and I was paying attention to, like, okay, when he's farming jungle, is he getting a lot of value out of the Ring of Health if he didn't really. have it? I, I yeah. thought, I think he was full of health the whole time, basically. Yeah. So it might have been fine either way. Well, at the end of the day, this, the Ring of Health only costs half of what he paid, right? Because he gets the refund, so. Very true. XXS. XXS. XXS gets off a nice rolling thunder, trying to control the disruptor. Only gets the one stun, though, as Monet pops the BKB, but said has nothing to say. He's all alone here on the high ground. Gets up the slide of his and the Rem is able to buy enough distance to live. And a rolling thunder continuing to go for XXS. Ame able to get the tricks of the trade off onto the low ground with the blink strike. They've lost their primal beast. Aster stands so strong in this position. This is like the dream spot to play Drow Shadow Demon. You have the hill. Shadow Demon gets to play keep away in the back and get a good disruption out. You just need to outlast this BKB on the Ricky and on the Ember, and they can't fight you anymore. So LGD really trying to put that pressure onto Aster and get control of another area of the map, but Aster are just ready for it. They're, they have good formation. Another great, uh, another great rolling thunder once again from XXS just took Disruptor out of the fight from the beginning. Ori trying to delete the Disruptor. One right click oh. away. They will find him. It looks like the Force have ends. The Shadow Demon gets into the Disruption just in time. And nothing to say melts. Ame gets the Blink Strike off. Make it two now as Faith Beyond kind of stuck. Let me use the shard here to keep himself alive for the time being. That's going to set up a potential stun from the LSA. Now the right clicks come, and that should be more than enough damage for Aster to eat through two cores for PSG LGD. And the two, two, tier 2 tower will fall as well. This game, minute 22, Gabe and Gabe Radiant, 88% chance yeah. of winning. And then Ricky started fighting, and suddenly... He sold flipped. his ring of health and it's been downhill ever since. <laughs> We're down to technically true. 67% chance now for Aster. Man. Not that the graphs are gospel, but it is uh, it is looking very good for them. Ember no buyback. Visage half a minute. Aster gonna try to squeeze as much out yeah. of this as they can. And this is what drown lineups do when they win a team fight. Indeed. Bye bye barracks. Five second push to take both of those out after the tower falls. Mm. Aster now taking control of the game, and you would imagine if they get this third Roche, they'll be feeling very, very confident about taking the win here after a rough early mid game. Just weathered the storm, had good positioning, and to me, once again, XXS Pango, showing why they raided this hero as they did when they picked it. Yeah, once he got really the Blink fatal. Dagger, it, he has been on point with these Rolling Thunders, no doubt. And he has a full Shiva's Yeah, down. Where did that come from? Very tanky. Gracious me. Yep. Uh, at this point, what does PSG LGD need to do? Because it feels like they're trying to force these fights, and like you said, the positioning from Aster has just been on point. They've been ready, it feels like, for every little engagement. I think LGD needs to be wiser about the areas that they fight in. I think the last two or three team fights they've lost have been on Aster high grounds, just where they have tried to get in and get superior vision, but the Pango has just been ready every time and canceled out the Disruptor from the fight. Um, maybe you chill. Maybe you farm up this Ags on Y, and you try to use that to set up a fight later. You just need to cool down. If you start forcing now, like brute forcing more aggressive plays, I think it's just going to backfire even harder. He is only 500 away from Axe. It's actually. close. Faith Beyond, by the way, went for a force step. He changed his mind away from that Axe himself because he's realizing, well, when they get on top of me, I'm kind of screwed. Double damage. With this item, he can reposition away from the Drow and the Lina and try to stay alive. And arguably, this should have been on one of the supports, right? I think it's something I've been harping on a bit in this playoff. I think teams are buying four step too little. One of the teams that's been doing it very successfully a lot of the time, I want to say, is Tundra. Uh, they've been buying quite a lot of four steps in their games, if I'm not mistaken, and really take advantage of that positioning. Oh, we got a smoke here from Aster. And you can see Ricky has the double damage. Static Storm immediately used, but again, the rolling thunder from XXS, but no, the BKB comes out from Ami, not able to get the double stun off here. So Aster might be wanting to retreat, as Boboka will live through this. 
We're getting some D ward action down. Not sure if either team wants to fight again. Another Shadow Blade. Man, so much invis in this game. And Roche. This could be game deciding on either side, really. Imagine getting an Ags on, like, Ricky, for example. After going for this, uh, oh, it looks like nothing to say went for the Daedalus, or is going for it now. Do you think it's they'll give it to Ricky or to Ember? It's my question. Probably Ember. The Ember one is also really valuable. I think nothing to say is running out of remnants. It matters not. It's a refresher shard. That was a good talk. Yep. Keep talking about it if you want, though. No yep. problem. Only 20 minutes and 30 seconds away from tier 5 neutral items, Shannon. <laughs> Better prepare. Oh, one of these days. I'm gonna yeah. get it. It's it's nothing you want more in Dota. <laughs> That's true. So and for fun. pro games to go 60 minutes so you can talk about your items. That's right. And I think all the time we've passed together has oh. happened once. Light Shadow. Faith Beyond. Another good rolling, rolling Thunder. thunder. Arrow. Arrow. LSC oh. and the Laguna Blade. He's dead. No buyback at all as Ori. His right clicks are not something you can ignore. They are able to find the Murana, though, so it's a one for one. But again, much more value kill coming out from Aster. And now Roche, they're going to see he's up. They scout it out. Just another amazing rolling thunder from XXS. And that time around gets connected on a max duration arrow onto Ricky. Did not get four staffed by Fate Beyond out of that stun chain. And one, as we covered, no defensive tools really aside from that glimpse will send XXS away, but he's just playing zone control, getting that refresher over to Lena, and they will be like, you know what, XXS, your rolling thunder has been pretty good, so you can have a second one. Yeah. Give I mean, the they, shard. Don't, they don't really have the best refresher shard heroes, other than obviously the BKBs. Which well, it's pretty decent stuff. on Lena, but I guess she can't support it yet with her item, but she doesn't have enough mana with the right click build. Yeah, nowhere near. So. Maybe if she had yeah. like a Shiva's or something. Uh, but now the MKB online for Ori, so... Even if the BKB is down, smoke screen, you can just kind of ignore it for the most part. Or just right clicking at least. Tier 1 tower is dead now, so Aster flipping this fallen. game completely around. What does LGD need to do? Tower. High ground defense time? Uh, they're they're going to be forced into that position more than likely, right? Um, the problem is their lineup is largely built around playing from ahead, right? You have Primal Beast who wants to charge in and take command of the fight and then glimpse heroes back. But once you're on defense, your heroes don't have the same kind of team fight impact, right? It's a lot harder for Disruptor to find the place that he wants without using an offensive glimpse. And he, as we've seen time and time again, he's been struggling to even get to play his hero. Maybe in the base, and with the Axe, they can... Okay, they're gonna oh, sleep the into dark. the storm. Yep, Static Storm is there. Blink Strike as well, the BKBs, disruption. but Disruption buys a lot of time. And he's A-OK -okay as Ori. He's gonna get the instant kill on him. Nothing to say who does not have buyback. And now they're gonna turn this around onto the Primal Beast. This is looks like the beginning of the end of game number one as Aster has come back with a vengeance. They were down big time early, but ever since the Blink Dagger came from XXS, as the GG's come out, it was just one-sided. Just yep. a crazy game. Isn't it kind of ironic how we're talking about how Ricky either snowballs or gets crushed? And in this game, he did both. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. He was really impressive when he wasn't in the fights. And then the instant he got...